State. I don't remember seeing a ball game quite this bad. Well, I tell you what, I'm I'm very lucky and happy today that we're in the booth and not on the playing field. I did play in one game like this back in Cleveland, the Raiders and the Browns back in 1980, a wind chill about 47 below. And it's very tough for the players. You get to the point that you actually don't care. You'd rather be off the field, even if you're moving the ball offensively and sitting your fanny on the nice warm bench. But uh, to say the least, it's going to be extremely tough here this afternoon. How tough right now? Swirling winds, a lot of snow falling, and the field is is frozen. Ball players right now warming up, having trouble holding on to the ball, and it's a real shame CU has to play in these conditions, considering all that's at stake. Well, there are obviously a lot at stake, and uh, both teams are going to have to go through this, and there was some talk early about maybe the game being shortened, uh, even canceled, but I don't know that that's going to happen, and if they play, I'm sure Bill McCartney will want his troops to go out and play as hard as they can. You have to throw out the game plan, however. Offensively, defensively, and kicking game, you just go out, probably try to run the football as much as you can, and hope that you get a couple of breaks. Very little trickery, uh, very little fancy doing on the field today. You'll probably see a lot of conventional football. I would imagine you're going to see Lamont Warren and Darian Hagan, uh, as long as Hagan can stay healthy, running the football quite a bit. Warren has had a great freshman year, and of course Hagan the senior, who has been the, the key to the Buffs' success the last few years. Those two guys will probably carry the football uh, between 25 and 30 times if they can. This might work a little bit to Iowa State's advantage, the weather conditions, because they have a quarterback, Kevin Caldwell, who who runs the ball better than he throws it, and they're going to run the ball primarily today. He's going to need snowshoes uh, to run it effectively today. Kevin Caldwell, formerly a running back, now he's a quarterback. Iowa State really has been hit hard by injuries. They've lost their first two quarterbacks, Chris Peterson and Bob Utter. So Kevin Caldwell, who did have over 150 yards rushing in one game this year, he's going to be the guy that uh, handles the football. All right, we'll take that park out of mothballs, bundle up. We'll be right back with the kickoff for Ames. Today's game is brought to you in part by State Farm Insurance, a proud company for Colorado, and also by Taco Bell and by Kinko's. to put it all behind you, to kiss all the stress, all the stomach-churning headaches of business goodbye. That's the power of United. That's the power of the friendly skies. You're not a kid anymore. You must be kidding me. You look 10 years younger than you're supposed to be. You've got smooth, soft skin, bright, shining eyes. Drinking milk every day. Well, that's no surprise, because milk tastes delicious. You're not a kid anymore. And I'll tell you what's more. You're not a kid anymore. Milk's good for you. You're not a kid anymore. Milk, because you're not a kid anymore. You're not a kid anymore. I wouldn't tell them to go trade in the Ford. I'd tell them just to go try a GMC. They'll trade it in themselves. The engine in my GMC truck is more snappy and seems to pull a lot better than the Ford that I used to have. Okay. What are we doing? Well, here's a good look at Jack Trice Field, Cyclone Stadium in Ames, Iowa. 50,000 seats in this stadium, and about 50 people right now sitting in them. The ISU marching band is on the field. Hard to believe they can blow into those horns as cold as it is. We're a few minutes from kickoff. CU and Iowa State 
CU comes into the ball game with a 7-2-1 overall record. In conference, the Buffs are 5-0-1. Oh, they have played 21 straight conference games without a loss. The last loss in conference came back in 1988. The Iowa State Cyclones, and we understand now why they are nicknamed the Cyclones, have a 3-6-1 three, three, record coming in. In conference, they are in sixth place with a 1-4-1 record. Dave, I know uh, a few minutes ago you talked about playing in these conditions at one time in the pros. What do you have to do on the field to stay warm? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's virtually impossible to stay warm. And what you have to try to do is block it out as much as you possibly can. And in conditions like these, it's, it's impossible to do. Uh, we're talking about, uh, I think, the second worst condition in, in terms of uh, playing conditions that I've ever seen. The wind is swirling. It's very, very cold. Wind chill, as you said, about 30 below. Uh, we'll have about 100 people watching the game, at least here in Ames, Iowa. Uh, you just try to maintain your footing. You try to stay off the field as much as you possibly can. And you try to get to that bench whenever uh, your time comes. CU comes into the game ranked 15th in the nation, according to Associated Press. It is the 46th straight week the Buffs are in the poll. And that is a school record. A win assures CU of its third straight conference title, possibly co-champion this year. Of course, we need to see what happens when Nebraska tees it up against Oklahoma on Friday, this coming Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Weather conditions, we've been talking about them a lot. The temperature right now, 18 degrees. With the wind chill, it is negative 16 with a very strong wind coming out of the northwest at 25 to 33 miles an hour. The skies, well, we would tell you if we could see it. All How would you describe that? <laughs> snowy. That's all we see is snow. Iowa State University in the middle of the state. Ames, Iowa. Enrollment here about 25,000. The same as CU. Chip may have the best uniform of all. And we're up here in a booth that is closer to heaven than the field. We had to walk through snow banks to get there. You take a look at the series records, but uh, I think Chip's got it made today. Colorado leads the series, 33 wins, 11 losses, one tie. And CU has won the last seven games, including last year's game in Boulder, 28 to 12. Everybody who shows up to this game should get a medal, Dave. This guy may become Mary Poppins sooner than he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> he could be in Des Moines in about an hour. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody in the stands, and we'll obviously have a chance to pan, oh, there you are. They should get something. Those people should get something, and it should be free. If they don't give them a medal? <laughs> Other than advice. Give them an IQ test. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is cold. Yes, indeedy. I really didn't think we were going to make it to our, our TV booth here. They roped off the, the upper part of the stands. They weren't going to allow anybody to sit up here. We tried to convince them that we were doing the game on TV. They hadn't shoveled anything, so we're walking in snow up to our knees. You're looking at the lower deck right yes. now where the fans are sitting. The upper deck is covered with snow. If the I don't close this window, so are we going to be. <laughs> we're trying to leave the uh, window open of the booth, and uh, we're going to be wet when this thing is done. 13 CU seniors playing in their last regular season game. Of course, the Buffs already have a bowl in their pocket. They'll be going to either the Orange Bowl if they can win the Big 8 title, or they will go to the Blockbuster Bowl if they win, and Nebraska also wins its game against Oklahoma. Or if CU loses, it could end up in the Gator Bowl. You know, it's unfortunate because, as you mentioned earlier, there's, there's a lot riding on the outcome of this game, and to play it in conditions such as these... Uh, it's really too bad for both teams. Iowa State, obviously, their season will come to an end after this football game. But Colorado, I'm sure, doesn't want to uh, have their fortunes ride on 25 below zero temperatures, but that's the case this afternoon. Mitch Berger with gloves on, trying to make sure the ball stays on the tee. He'll be kicking off for CU. Back to receive the kickoff for Iowa State. Will be number three, Sherman Williams, 
also a running back for the Cyclones. And number 86, James McMillian. If you hear some ambient noise behind us, it's because we're sharing a broadcast booth with Prime Sports Network. The kickoff by Berger goes into the end zone. McMillian cannot bring it out, so Iowa State will start with the ball at its own 20-yard line. Lining up at quarterback for Iowa State, Kevin Caldwell, a freshman. He is a third-string quarterback. And as Dave told you earlier, Chris Peterson and Bob Utter, the first and second stringers, are injured. Caldwell on the year. He's best when he's running it. Throwing the ball, 598 yards on the year. He's played six games for the Cyclones. First and 10 from the 20-yard line for Iowa State. And Iowa State comes out throwing the ball. <laughs> the ball is caught by the tight end, Paul Schulte. Here are your backs and receivers for Iowa State. Jim Nott is the starting tailback. And your offensive line for Iowa State. Scott Armbrust leads that group at center. A pickup of nine yards on that pass play. Cyclones have the ball at their own 29. It's second and one. That's Sundiata Patterson running the ball, and it looks like he's picked up the first down. Leonard Renfro made the tackle. In fact, there you see the defensive line for the Buffs. Preseason All-American pick Joel Steed leads the way. The linebackers are Ronnie Woolfork. And Chad Brown, Greg Beaker, that should be Greg Beaker, along with Ted Johnson. And the DBs, led by senior co-captain Greg Thomas. First down for Iowa State from its own 31. The pitch goes to Jim Knott. Dion Figures knocks him out of bounds. Well, he talked about both offenses having obvious problems trying to pitch the football that time pretty good pitch and Iowa State is a team that does not have great speed on the offensive side of the ball and therefore they're a team that likes to run straight ahead but not made good yardage on the first down toss it is very hard to get the footing and you can see why it's not just snow it's hardened snow almost ice down there right now this wind and this snow has been blowing since early yesterday morning in Iowa the pitch is fumbled but fallen on by a cyclone Jim not was to receive the pitch, he fumbled the ball, fell on it himself. And again, because of the wind factor here, and in this case, Marcellus Elder, who gets good penetration on Caldwell, it's gonna be tough to pitch the football. Teams in conditions like these are probably better off just running the ball straight ahead, limiting their offense because of the weather. And Iowa State's got a big offensive line. They average well over 300 pounds, and they're able to knock folks off the ball, at least they have from time to time this year. Third and ten, Kevin Caldwell playing with two bruised elbows he suffered last week against Nebraska. And he will hand it off this time. Pick up of about five yards. Joel Steed makes the tackle on Jim Knott. And Iowa State is in a punting situation with fourth and six. And this is going to be the interesting part of the game, I think, for both teams. Kickoffs, punts punt returns we watched in practice punters from this direction kick the ball and it almost landed directly over their head Rico Smith will do all the punt returning for CU today Darian Hagan will not have to do that a low kick and that's the way you have to kick it fumbled by Rico and it looks like the Cyclones have picked up the ball they have Iowa State has the ball in CU territory it's approximately the 45 yard line of the Buffs well, again, special teams in bad weather conditions play large roles. You'll see Rico Smith try to field it. The ball takes a funny hop, and Rico, again, tries to bend down and pick it up. Can't do it. And Paul Schulte, I think number 91, comes away with the football. There will be, I think it, we're safe in saying, several turnovers in this football game this afternoon. You have to make sure if you drop it, you fall on it. First and 10, Iowa State 
They've marked it at the 41-yard line. It's very difficult to see the yard markers today, so please bear with us. Caldwell is looking to go downfield. Dumps it off to Patterson. Excuse me, Jim Knott. And he picks up about five yards on that play. Ronnie Wolfork made the tackle. One thing when Iowa State wants to throw the ball, and I think you'll see Colorado do the same thing when they get a chance, you'll try to throw safe passes. And that time Caldwell comes back, takes a quick look to the left side, but it's a screen set up to the right side, a relatively safe pass and one that's easy to complete. You won't see a lot of throwing the football down the field today. Especially going in this direction because the wind is in your face at a gust of 33 miles an hour. Second and seven for Iowa State from the CU 38-yard line. This is Jim Knott with a lot of room to roam, and he is even deeper into CU territory. Greg Thomas made the tackle inside the CU 20-yard line. Well, you remember how Kansas last week was able to really generate a good running game against Colorado in conditions like this in the field, the offense has the advantage, and not right through the middle. Had Greg Thomas not made that tackle, Jim Knott would have scored. Iowa State doing a good job up front, a nice push. Defensively, you can't really rush as you normally do because the footing is so bad, and Greg Thomas saved the touchdown on that play. First down for Iowa State. This is not again, and he's hit quickly by Joel Steed and Ted Johnson. The reason you run so many draw plays, again, it's tough for the offensive line to really establish the line of scrimmage coming off very hard. In a draw play, the first thing they do is set up in a pass-blocking technique. You allow the defensive lineman to come to you, then you simply shield him away from the ball carrier, get in his way. I would imagine you'll see both teams use that play a lot. We've already seen Iowa State run it several times. That should be second down and eight at the CU 21-yard line. The option, not again. Inside the 15-yard line, he is close to a first down. Dion Figures made the tackle. Jim Knott doing the bulk of the work for Iowa State so far. We expect the running backs to do most of the work for both teams today. I'll tell you, Dave, CU is going to be in a little trouble trying to run that east-west option game because you not only have to head towards the sideline, then you have to plant that foot and cut up field, and that might be very difficult. Third and one for Iowa State. Soon be out of Patterson. Let's see if he got it. Again, that's the made, Excuse me, Dave Renfro made the tackle. That's the kind of play that's going to be tough because it requires your offensive line to get a push, and the footing is just not going to allow you to do that. There's not going to be much of a pass rush normally. There's not going to be much of a surge. to talk about whether or not to go for it. I believe they were short on the running play, short of the first down. It'll be fourth and less than a yard to go. The question now is, do you attempt a field goal with that wind blowing in your face as strongly as it is? I don't know that you can even try to kick the ball, although, as you mentioned, from this particular angle, they're going to be kicking with the wind. But Jim Walton's had a very tough year. Had a lot of injuries, and I think uh, the last game of the season, you give your your, your uh, players every opportunity that you can to uh, to win a football game. So I don't know that they'll kick. Walden's in the uh, sunglasses on the right side of the screen. 52 years old, Jim Walden, in his fifth year here. I got one guy telling me we're hot. Back with you in Ames, Iowa. It looks a lot colder. It feels a lot colder, I should say, than it looks. I, I was going to say, you better not say it looks a lot colder <laughs> than it feels. I'll let you stand over here. Are you having trouble finding your toes right now? I, I don't have any. <laughs> well, the CU kicker's name is Pat Blue Toe, and that's certainly appropriate today. We have some blue toes up here in the booth. And we're inside. The window's open, though.
9.50 to go in the first quarter. Our score is 0-0, CU and Iowa State. A win for CU, and they clinch their third straight Big A title. Possibly co-champion with Nebraska, if Nebraska can pull off the win against Oklahoma later in the week. It's fourth and one, and Iowa State is going for it. This is not. He's got it, and more. Almost into the end zone. He is in the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa State. Well, what a good call by Jim Walden. Colorado really bunched up inside and certainly anticipated Sundiata Patterson, the big fullback, getting the football. Watch Caldwell ride the fullback inside to take it back, makes the quick pitch in front of Chad Brown, and not makes a good move right there as he breaks the tackle of Eric Hamilton enough to cross the goal line. An impressive drive to start the game by the Cyclones. The extra point, Ty Stewart for the Cyclones. And even the extra point is an adventure today, but Ty Stewart gets it through. And Iowa State with a 7 to nothing lead. We're going to take a break in Ames, Iowa. We'll be right back. Two more to go. We're almost ready. Great. Doing with their presentation. We're ready. When your department has to deliver, call Kinko's, the copy center. We take care of the copies so you can take care of business. Now you can get the highest quality copies in town delivered right to your door. Just call Kinko's, the copy center. We pick up your originals and deliver clear quality copies directly to you. No more traffic, no more lines. Depend on Kinko's. We pick up and deliver. anti-lock brakes. Introducing the all-new Pontiac Grand Am. See your neighborhood Colorado Pontiac dealer. Back in frozen Ames, Iowa. And Dave, if things aren't bizarre enough here with the weather conditions, the few fans that did show up for the game were doing the tomahawk chop a few minutes ago. No, trying to stay warm. I tell you, if it gets much colder, I think you and I are going to be doing that in the booth. Back to receive the kickoff for the Buffs, Chris Hudson and Charles Johnson. And kicking off will be Ty Stewart. A boomerang kick almost dropped by the Buffs. Can you call a fair for a fair catch on a kickoff? Sure. Absolutely. And that's a great, great play. The ball was well up into the wind and smart play by the Buffs and able to hang on to the football. So Darian Hagan has his first opportunity now to test the elements. Buffs with the ball at approximately the 37-yard line. Darian Hagan, the senior, his regular season finale for the University of Colorado. He is very close to setting a couple more CU records. All-time passing yardage and all-time number of touchdown passes. It's going to be very difficult to get those records today, however. On the option, Hagan tries to turn it upfield himself. Gets it to about... About the line of scrimmage, actually, the 30-yard line. Dan Milner made the tackle. Here are your backs and receivers for CU. Lamont Warren, we expect a lot of work out of the freshman tailback today. He is only seven yards away from setting the CU freshman record for rushing yardage. And the offensive line, of course, led by co-captain Jay Lewenberg at center. Second and seven. Once again, I need to tell you, we are guessing on the yardage on most of these plays because you cannot see the yard markers. Hagan again has some room. Rubbed out of bounds at about the 42-43 yard line. Lester Ridley the tackle. The Iowa State defense looks like this. Defensive line led by Matt Rayberg. He's the senior out of Omaha. The linebackers led by Dan Milner. 
Their leading tackler with almost 11 a game. He had 16 tackles against Nebraska last week. And their defensive backs, Harding Armstrong, Dubrava, the junior, and Sean Walker. First down for the Buffs. This is Warren. Gets a yard, maybe two. Brought down by Troy Peterson. And Colorado trying to come out and run the draw the way Iowa State did on their first drive. You've seen Darian Hagan the first couple of plays run the option and exercise great patience. I think you'll see that for most of the game. There won't be the quick cuts, the stop and go running style that Hagan has implemented in his four years. You're going to have to stretch that option out and run downhill and run in one direction. Warren picked up two yards on that play as some of the buffs try to keep warm. It's second and eight. Hagan again. Keeps it, but brought down quickly by Milner. You could see Darian had a lot of trouble finding his feet there. Well, that's what I'm talking about. It's, it's really impossible to make a quick move, a move that will allow you to pull away the, from the grasp of a tackler. And Milner, the 6'1", 230-pound junior linebacker, just slides down the defensive line of scrimmage and is right there to greet Darian Hagan. It'll be third and eight for the Buffs. We're under the eight-minute mark in the first quarter. Iowa State got on the board quickly and leads this game 7 to nothing. Hagan will throw for the first time today. Going deep. Has a man open, but overthrows him. It was Rico Smith back at the 25-yard line of Iowa State. Well, Hagan that time had a lot of protection, and I don't, I don't think you'll see a pass rush from either team today. So Darian Hagan stands back in the pocket. He pats the football a couple of times, waits for somebody to open up, finally tries to get the ball to Rico Smith, who uncovers about 20 yards downfield. But as you can see, the ball well over the head of Rico Smith and out of bounds. No pass rush today. So if you can throw the ball into the wind, you're going to have time to do it. The Buffs and Mitch Berger will punt it. James McMillian, one of the better punt returners in the nation, lets it drop. Probably a smart move. And the ball is back inside the Iowa State five-yard line. Looks like it's at about the two. All right, we're going to take a break. We need it in Ames, Iowa. And Iowa State leads this one 7 to nothing. special factory shipment of Dakota 4x4 club cabs in stock now. With our powerful new Magnum V8, these trucks have more power, more towing, and more payload than any Ford, Chevy, or import compact 4x4 club cab. But hurry, with 750 cash back, our selection of Dakota club cabs won't last long. See your local Dodge dealer today. Rediscover American value. Between you and me, this is my best value at 22 grand. The price of today's automobile is higher than ever before. I can get you into a 48-month payment plan, no problem. The right. terms of financing are longer than ever before. Let's go into my office. That's why regular oil and lubrication maintenance every 90 days at Grease Monkey is more important than ever before. 21.5. What do you say? Grease Monkey, extending the life of your car. We could go 60 months on the payment. We are back in Anchorage, or excuse me, Ames, Iowa, where Iowa State is starting with the ball on its own two-yard line, first down. And Sundiata Patterson with a nice pickup up the middle. About seven yards on that play. We've talked about all the things that the weather, the problems the weather presents for a defense, hard to tackle because you have nothing to grab hold of. Your hands, you've got gloves. You've got to tackle with the shoulder, cross body block at times, and it's much easier to break tackles in conditions like this. Second and three for Iowa State. Both lines jump. Let's see what the call is. Well, somebody moved, but Colorado State already made contact coming across the line of scrimmage. 
The call is off sides against CU, so it'll be five yards marked off and an automatic first down for Iowa State because they only needed three for the first down. You see Caldwell drawing Colorado across the line, did a nice job changing the snap cadence. CU defense ranked 12th best in the nation, has given up a little under 14 points a game, 13.6 to be exact. First down for Iowa State. Caldwell decides to keep himself. Ronnie Woolfork rides him and the snow out of bounds. Kevin Caldwell, as we told you, a running back playing quarterback. Has excellent speed. The play action fake moves Colorado inside a little bit, but I think this is a play that Caldwell right from the get-go said, hey, if I have any crack out there, I'm going to run. Ronnie Wolfork on the tackle. Caldwell actually played tailback a couple of games this year for the Cyclones, but he's filling in a quarterback because of the injury situation. He ran for two touchdowns against Nebraska last week. It's second and four, and a fumble, but Caldwell brings it back himself, and he just falls down, maybe a gain of one yard. Well, you are in trouble. If you're deep in your own territory at this end of the field and you're in a punting situation because that punt might end up falling behind you. Well, I think I think both coaches would say, hey, if we're going to have to have the ball down here, we'd rather be on defense. See, Caldwell right there, his knee on the ground, so the play is stopped. But your hands become so cold. Even if you keep rubbing them and walking the line of scrimmage that after about the third or fourth play, you can't feel your hands anymore. It's third and four. Iowa State with the ball at its own 19-yard line. A lot of movement on the line again. I, I don't think there's a flag here. I, I don't here. see a flag either. There should have been a flag on the play because the ball wasn't snapped and there was contact. Iowa State trying to draw, draw Colorado off sides again. There was no flag. The ball was snapped. And after Caldwell got it, nobody from Iowa State moved. So Colorado went ahead with the play. I think this is going to be fourth down. You're absolutely right. There was contact on the line before the ball was snapped. No flags, however. A timeout on the field. The referee is calling an official timeout. And all 243 fans here are booing. Are there that many? I think there's a couple I hundred. Think you're, I think you're including the marching band in that total. <laughs> <laughs> it's fourth and four. Iowa State will punt the ball from its own 19. Rico Smith will attempt to field it. And I say attempt because before the game started, it was very difficult, the kicking situation. Caldwell fumbles it, picks it up himself. And the Buffs will take over inside the Iowa State 10-yard line. John Schnorr, the punter, could not hold on to the snap. Well, and this just goes to show you really how tough it is out here. Schnorr had him hit. The box of the ball hits him. It's a perfect snap. Ball hits him right in the hands and goes directly through him. And thus, Iowa State turns the football over. Julian Hayward right there for the tackle, and Colorado has a great opportunity here. Dave, I'm not so sure you should be wearing gloves out there at that point. Maybe keep the gloves out on the sideline, then come out without the gloves. I don't think it matters, to tell you the truth. You can wear anything you want to or nothing. See you with the ball at the Iowa State seven-yard line. Lamont Warren immediately goes down. Nobody hit him. He just slipped. See, Warren's got his hands in that little compartment that's tied around your waist. You can keep your hands in there as long as you want to, but once you bring them out, the football, when it's this cold, becomes incredibly slick to handle. It's almost like they grease the thing. You can have it in your hands and start to run, all of a sudden it disappears. No gain on that play, so it's second and goal from the seven. Under four minutes to go in the first quarter. Hagan himself, and might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. I think Darian Hagen, Dave, you, you tell me if you see it this way also. Darian has basically said, I'm not going to pitch it. I don't even want to hand it off. I'm going to do most of the running today, and that way we won't lose the ball. I think that play really is called from the sideline, and Hagen rides the fullback, but you're right. This is a keeper all the way. You see James Hill looks up the defensive end to block, and on a playing field like this, it takes Darian Hagen's expertise away. He can't cut back. He can't make people miss. You can't truly get involved in the option game. 
No gain on the last two plays, so it's third and goal from the seven. Hagan throwing the ball, a corner out. Westbrook almost had the ball. He had the defender beat, but couldn't hold on. Hagan just on a short drop. It's a fade pattern. Westbrook will freeze the defensive back inside and then head to the corner, and this just out of the reach of Michael Westbrook. Pat Bluto is kicking the field goals today for CU. Jim Harper is back home, basically, in competition kicking this week. Bluto outplayed Jim Harper. Bluto has kicked one field goal in his CU career, and this one is good. So the Buffs are on the board. Their first three points of the day. Iowa State leads it 7-3 to three with 3.16 to go in the first quarter. Pat Pluto, who has played in just three games in the last three years. He is a junior out of Anaheim. sure to contact your Denver Metro Area State Farm agent soon for a free family insurance checkup. If you head to the high country this winter, you might like to know that Nissan Pathfinder not only has the best resale value of any sport utility vehicle, it also has optional four-wheel drive and optional 31-inch radials to help you get up here. Getting down is up to you. Pathfinder. Buy one for all its value. Drive one for all its worth. Buy a Pathfinder now and get two free days of skiing for two at Steamboat. Back in Ames, Iowa, take a look at the CU sideline. We tell you who these people are, but, but we don't know ourselves. Oh, you know think. that. Look at that walk. <laughs> That's Bill McCartney. He's usually the one pacing the sideline. A wind chill of 19 below zero at the start of this game. CU just kicked the field goal and is kicking off. And the ball is down in the end zone by Iowa State, so it'll come out to the 20. We have 3.16 to go in the first quarter. The Buffs are down 7-3. to three. So far, a pretty good job by that man, Kevin Caldwell, playing quarterback. Iowa State has 60 yards of total offense. Colorado with 17. Cyclones lead it 7-3, to three, and that's what I'm talking about right there. Everybody's interested immensely in getting to that burner. I saw a guy one time watching action, putting his foot up there, and caught his socks on fire. <laughs> The Iowa State offense averages 14 points a game. Right now, the ball first and 10 from their own 20. Caldwell keeps it, gets a couple of yards. Marcella Selder and Greg Beaker are there to make the stop. Oh, Dave, there's a lot of talk. Is CU lucky this year, or is luck the residue of hard work? Oh, I think a little bit of both. I think whenever you have a good team, you have to be a little bit lucky. You've got to be lucky not, lucky not to have a lot of injuries, lucky to make big plays to win games toward the end of contest, and they certainly have been. Second and nine for Iowa State. We'll get back to that thought in a second. Caldwell wants to throw. Up the middle, complete. And a first down for Iowa State. Greg Thomas made the tackle on the receiver, Lamont Hill, and that is his 20th catch of the year. Well, I'll tell you, another, another man that used to play tailback, Dave. This is an impressive throw and catch. Caldwell, just a straight drop back. Hill will come from the right side of your screen. Greg Beaker gets a hand on him right there, but doesn't disrupt the pattern. That's an excellent catch in weather conditions like this. You played receiver in college in the pros. How difficult is it on a day like today to catch one of those stinging spirals? Well, unlike when conditions are normal, you try to catch the ball into your body. You, you don't want to catch it with your hands. Let the ball get to your body and then just firmly grasp it. And that time, Hill did a terrific job. Iowa State with a first down at its own 40-yard line. 
Jim Knott will run it, but not very far. Might have a yard on the play. Talking about luck, I think every team, every team that, that goes through a season, that's Mike Berry talking to his offensive lineman, and has success, has to be a little bit lucky. I mean, Miami, as good as they've been this year, and Florida State last week. Florida State unlucky because the kicking game fails them. Miami has to figure a 34-yard field goal is going to beat them in the biggest game of the year, and he pushes it wide right. Got to be a little bit lucky. Second and nine for Iowa State from its own 41. Another pass to Lamont Hill, and again complete for another first down. At midfield, Iowa State now. I'll tell you what, tell you what happens here. Ronnie Bradford... Ronnie Bradford from the left side, as soon as he sees that option fake, will come and leave the receiver and come to play run defense. And Hill simply slips by Bradford on his way to the quarterback and turns and faces Kevin Caldwell, makes an easy pass and catch. One more note on that theme that CU might be lucky this year, pulling all these games out of the fire. Quarterback Darian Hagan said, hey, they can call us lucky, but we're the ones piling up the victories, the rings, and the ball trips while everybody else is home moping. First and 10 from the 50. This is not. Breaks through into the secondary once again. That young man having a fine afternoon, Greg Thomas, the tackle. But not before not picks up about another 20 yards. We mentioned the big offensive line of the Cyclones. You'll see them do an excellent job here of zone blocking, just taking the defenders which direction they start, and not comes through a gaping hole. Hamilton gets him low, and Greg Thomas again has to make a touchdown-saving tackle. The offensive line doing a good job. Look at that block there. An excellent block by Scarpet, who gets right on top of Greg Beekert and drives him backwards, allowing not to pick up more yardage. Iowa State with another first down at the CU 37-yard line. Not gets about three yards on that play. Clock winding down. We're close to the end of the first quarter. Less than 40 seconds to go now. Iowa State leading it 7-3. And again, the offensive line really has the advantage here. As a defender, it's tough to get off the block unless you have good footing. So once an offensive lineman gets into you, you can't get rid of him as quickly as you normally would. And thus, Iowa State did an excellent job. Ten carries for 60 yards for not. And by the way, throwing the ball, Caldwell is four of four for 41 yards. So the and Cyclones have been near perfect here in the first quarter. And most incredible, he's been throwing the ball against the wind, a gusting wind of more than 30 miles an hour. Final play of the first quarter. Caldwell, the screen to not. And Greg Beekert makes the tackle. Boy, Beekert coming off a great game. We'll tell you about it as soon as we come back in Ames, Iowa. That's the end of the first quarter. Iowa State leads it 7 to 3. Thanks to you, now there are two. Two Alexander's Hand Car Wash locations. You've seen the value of our exclusive hand wash process with no harsh chemicals, no mechanical brushes. You've become our regular customers at 2600 South Broadway, and you've helped us grow to open a second location in Arvada. Thanks to you, now there are two. Alexander's Central at 2600 South Broadway and Alexander's West, 6570 Wadsworth. Fall is here and winter's not far behind. That means it's crazy clear this time at Christopher Dodge. That's right, Chris. Get the family ready for winter with a 1991 model Dodge car or truck for the crazy clearance price of only $99 over dealer invoice. Only $99 over dealer invoice. At these crazy clearance prices, they won't last long. And I've got great savings on 1992 models because I'm crazy about my customers. Come see Chris the Crazy Trader at Christopher Dodge, just west of Wadsworth on Colback. What do Milk, America's Health Kick, and Broncos Beef have in common? A chance for you to win two tickets to an upcoming Broncos home game. Watch Broncos beat Saturday nights at 6.30 for details. Today's game is brought to you in part by Grease Monkey and by State Farm Insurance, both proud companies for Colorado, and also by McDonald's. We're back in Ames, Iowa. Jack Trice Field. And Dave Logan and I are two of the few people here today. 
Weather conditions abominable. Just like the snowman. We're starting the second quarter. Iowa State with a 7-3 lead. And the ball on the CU 29-yard line. Now here you got to figure third down and three. You're in two down territory. You're playing with the wind. If they don't get it here, probably they'll go for it on fourth down. Caldwell hands off to not. And they are short of the first down. Now keep in mind, if they were going the other way, they wouldn't even consider a field goal attempt. Now the wind is behind the field goal kicker. It's fourth and one. Well, we've talked about them using this play a lot. You see Caldwell has a tough time getting the snap from Scott, Scott Armbrust. And because of the zone blocking and the field conditions, the offensive line would just get in the way of somebody in a white jersey, and it's up to not to pick the correct hole. I think they're going to be real close to this first down, and I don't think you'll see Jim Walden kick the ball here, even if they're short. They are about a yard short of the first down. And the offense still on the field for Iowa State, so they'll be going for it. Fourth and one from the CU 24-yard line. Fourth and inches. A few CU buffs <laughs> among the crazies here today. Well, we ran into a few people, Dave, in the hotel lobby who actually drove here. The last time fourth and short, they ran the option with Caldwell making the pitch at the last moment. The give to Patterson, he fumbles the ball, and CU has it. So on fourth down, Iowa State goes for it, fumbles it away, and they're really not hurt that badly on that play. Iowa State wanted to run the option, but soon Deanna Patterson, the fullback, got stuffed in the hole. Caldwell will try to take the ball back from him, has a tough time from the center, wants to take this ball back. But you can see Patterson get knocked in the hole by Leonard Renfro. The ball comes loose, and Greg Beekert is on top of it. Good job on penetration by Leonard Renfro, stuffed the fullback and forced the fumble. Just starting the second quarter, and that's the fourth fumble of the day. See you with the ball. Lamont Warren breaks through. A nice cutback. Nobody in front of him. Lamont Warren, 74 yards for CU, and he has just set the freshman record for rushing yardage in Boulder. Well, we've talked about Lamont Warren most of this year. Obviously, he's got very good speed, but he's got excellent strength for a freshman. And you'll see the draw play. Warren runs through a couple of arm tackles. First, Lester Ridley has a chance. And once Lamont Warren gets out in front, there are few players in the country that are going to catch him from behind. Lamont Warren still playing with a tender shoulder. He separated a couple of weeks ago. And Pat Pluto with the extra point attempt. He has it. And the Buffs have their first lead of the day. 10 to 7 over Iowa State with 14 19 to go in the first half. What's this 59 anytime? 59 anytime. It's breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack time too. Well, it's your time. My time. And anytime we go. Time out. No, never. Limited time times. No way. It's Google time. And ghostly time. If it is the season time. 59 anytime time. is here for a long, long time. At McDonald's food, folks and fun. There are plenty of places you can go to take a chance. But for a sure thing, go directly to your Acura dealer. Acura has just been ranked best in operating performance and overall comfort at three years of ownership. That's according to a survey from J.D. Power & Associates. Not a tip from your brother-in-law's bookie. Lease a 91 Acura Legend for $3.99 a month. See Courtesy in Littleton, Flatirons in Boulder, Mile High in Denver.
CompraCare's job is to make sure you stay that way. Join the CompraCare Health Plan and live well. See you and Lamont Warren just put seven points on the board. Warren last week against Kansas on a snow blanketed field ran for 94 yards and Dave he looks like the only guy who's able to run on the stuff today too. Well I tell you what he took off on, the, on that ISO draw and got into the secondary and again with such great speed we talked about him last week he runs under control and he's still running quickly. Lamont Warren has been a terrific player in his freshman year at Colorado. Mitch Berger kicking off that ball hanging in the air because of the wind and Iowa State fields it and just falls down. Take a look at the touch. Take a look at the touchdown, Les. James Hill will lead Lamont Warren up, get an excellent block in the linebacker, and Lewenberg seals to the right side. Warren makes a good cut back. Most great backs have excellent vision, and from seven or eight yards behind the quarterback, you can let things open up for you. Warren with a nice cut back, and again, nobody will catch him, at least not many, in the next three years from behind. Lamont Warren, the freshman out of Englewood, California. That puts him over the 700-yard mark for rushing this year. Iowa State starts with the ball at its own 31-yard line. Kevin Caldwell still the quarterback. The pass to Nod, who makes a nice catch. Gains about five yards after the catch. Close to the first down. Well, same play as they've used before. Again, Caldwell comes back. Not the running back will come out and just flare to the right side. He fakes the block, dips inside the left tackle or the right tackle, and then here comes the screen. You can see some of the offensive linemen trying to get in front of him. Caldwell makes a not makes a nice catch. Wolfork almost got the face mask, but had the helmet and got the tackle. All that work in Iowa State picked up just three yards on the play, so it's second and seven. Well, trudging through the snow, throws off balance complete. But well, considering the conditions, that was a wonderful play. The pass caught by Chris Spencer, the split end. Well, Spencer makes an excellent catch here. This Caldwell will come out the play action fake, tries to hold the inside linebackers. You see Beekert and Ted Johnson running with the tight end. This is an excellent throw. Watch the catch in his hands. Ball a little bit high. Spencer, who was honorable mention all Big 8 last year, probably Iowa State's best wide receiver, makes a good catch. And the Cyclones have another first down. Spencer was honorable mention all Big 8 last year. First down for Iowa State. The ball on the CU 42. Soon the out of Patterson gets a couple of yards. <laughs> Greg Beekert made the tackle. Last week, Beekert had 22 tackles against Kansas. Earlier in the year, he had a game of 21 tackles against Baylor. He is averaging a little better than 12 tackles a game, and that leads this team. And the entire linebacking core of the Buffs this year back next year. Wolfork, Beaker, Ted Johnson, and Chad Brown. Second and eight for Iowa State at the CU 40. Caldwell will run it, but not very far. Picks up about three yards. Leonard Renfro catches him from behind. One of the difficulties when you convert a running back to quarterback although he was recruited as a quarterback they have a tendency once they go back in the pocket to want to escape when the first receiver or pattern breaks down when somebody doesn't open up right away they want to get out of there and you can take a look and uh, we have one cameraman up there he's the only one in the whole <laughs> south stands <laughs> yeah <laughs> stay warm my friend third and three Caldwell, a good rush. Ronnie Wolfork with the sack. And that is sack number 11 and a half for Wolfork. He leads the team in that category. Well, once too often on this drive, the same kind of play. You see the play action fake, and Caldwell wants to roll to his left. Wolfork coming on the blitz runs right into the play. And Ronnie Wolfork has had an excellent season at the outside linebacking spot. Play action fake. You see Wolfork's not buying that. He's on the blitz. And nobody blocks him except Kevin Caldwell. Iowa State will punt the ball. John Schnorr will do it. 
And Rico Smith is back to receive it. Schnorr with the win behind him now. Rico Smith lets it fall. The ball bounds out of the end zone, and CU will have it at its own 20. We've got 10.46 to go in the second quarter. CU with a 10 to 7 lead. We'll take a break. For 1992, there's a snowmobile that has a powerful 190 horsepower engine. Jeep Cherokee Laredo. The snowmobile that features four-wheel drive, automatic transmission, air conditioning, power windows and locks, tilt steering wheel and more. No wonder it's one of the most popular snowmobiles on or off the road. And right now, it can be yours for only $2.99 a month with Gold Key Plus financing from your Jeep and Eagle dealer. See your local Jeep Eagle dealer. Love you. <laughs> you made me want you. The McDonald's Big Mac is irresistible. Add fries and a Coke, and so is the deal. The extra value meal at McDonald's today. A great price for a great meal. Mmm, Big Mac sandwich, large fries, medium Coke, $2.99. Plus tax, prices may vary. You're gonna love it. You're not a kid anymore, you must be kidding me. You look ten years younger than you're supposed to be. You got great muscle tone, bright shining eyes. Drinking milk every day. Well, that's no surprise, cause milk tastes delicious. You're not a kid anymore. And I'll tell you what's more. You're not a kid anymore. Milk's good for you. You're not a kid anymore. Milk, cause you're not a kid anymore. Well, I, I was going to say that these fans are smart. They brought a shovel to the game. But if they were really smart, they wouldn't have come to the game at all. Oh, boy. <laughs> Diehard fans. 10.46 to go in the first half. See you at the ball at its own 20. And a lead of 10 to 7. Darian Hagen keeps it and gets approximately six yards on the play. Malcolm Goodwin the stop. And fumbles after he was down. Iowa State defensively has had all sorts of problems this year stopping the run they give up 353 yards uh, when they played Nebraska this year there's where we are we can wave <laughs> and you see a full like, booth if it looks like there are too many of us we're sharing the booth with the folks from Prime Sports Network Dave Armstrong and Dave Lapham <laughs> they told us there was one enclosed booth we all chose to take the chance that we would listen to each other on each other's microphones. That pass incomplete from Hagen. He is hit as he's throwing it. That goes to show you how tough it is to throw against the wind here. Hagen had Michael Westbrook wide open. You'll see him get the football up in the air right before he's hit. Look at that thing. Hunters would have a field day with that. And that's not Hagen throwing. That's the wind blowing. It's third and five for the Buffs. If you told him in Locke High School that he'd wind up his career in Ames, Iowa, is 30 below, I'm not sure he'd have been a Buffalo. Hagan, this time the pass is tipped. Brings up fourth down, and CU will have to punt the ball. How would you like to be the recruiting coordinator for Iowa State and bring in some of your prized recruits on this weekend? Well, you, you keep them right in the hotel and give them lots of hot chocolate, I can tell you that. Hagan, the drop back pass, this is tipped right at the line of scrimmage. An excellent job getting a right hand on. I think it may have been Malcolm Goodwin, the inside linebacker who got his hand up in the air. Probably Mitch sorry he did now. Mitch Berger will be punting to James McMillian. McMillian averages 14.8 yards a kick return. However, he won't get a chance to return that one. Yeah, I think Mitch almost missed that ball. Uh, if, he let it we, go out we, of his hands, if, and the wind. If we him. take a look at it, much the same as at Soldiers Field a couple of years ago, the wind took the football when Berger dropped it, and he almost missed it with his right foot. There's a shot of Jack Trice Field. You see, there aren't too many people here today. The stadium seats 50,000. Most chose to stay home. Iowa State with the ball on its own 34. It's first down. Call 
Caldwell has had some success throwing in that time. That is successful also at midfield. The receiver once again, Lamont Hill. Ohio State doing a good job. An underneath receiver holds the linebackers close to the line of scrimmage, and then Lamont Hill will come in on the end pattern and get right between the linebackers. Watch Greg Beaker engage the tight end. That keeps him up further away from this crossing route right there. Lamont Hill on an end pattern in front of Ronnie Bradford and before Greg Thomas can get to him. Well-thrown football. Another first down for Iowa State. At the CU 49-yard line. This goes to the first man through, Sundiata Patterson. He gets it down to the 45, a gain of about four. Leonard Renfro the tackle. Renfro stayed home a couple of weeks ago when CU traveled to Oklahoma State with a bad hamstring. This is not the type of weather that will help that hamstring injury along either. It's second down and six. Bill McCartney, the man in the middle of your screen with the hood on, saying to himself, let's get the win and get the heck out of here. And right now, CU leads it 10 to seven. 8.40 to go in the first half. Caldwell brought down for the sack. And once again, it looks like Ronnie Wolfork. Wolfork's second sack of the day. A well, pretty good job, really, by Doug Skartvet, the left tackle, blocking a Wolfork. But when Caldwell tried to escape, he ran right into the pressure from the outside. So Skartweed on the block, I don't think you can fault him, but he, his man will get credit for the sack. I like that hit. We should have gotten a hold of a couple of those before we came out here. I like to put them on my feet. Third and ten for Iowa State. Still at the CU 49-yard line. Sundiata Patterson into the backfield. A first down for Iowa State. Greg Thomas rides him out. But not before Patterson picks up approximately 14 yards on the play. Sundiata Patterson is a two-year starter at fullback. He's been banged up this year. You'll see him right there. Wolfork has the quarterback, and nobody has Patterson until Greg Thomas, again from his free safety spot, meets him head-on. Patterson with an excellent run, and Iowa State is doing a good job up front. We've talked a lot about their offensive line, a big, strong offensive line, and so far been able to establish the line of scrimmage even in conditions such as these. Patterson playing with bruised ribs, although the cold today is probably numbing them, and he doesn't feel them. Caldwell going deep, has a man open. Incomplete, broken up by Ronnie Bradford. Up until that incomplete well, he's pass, throwing Caldwell, with Caldwell had completed every pass. He's throwing with the wind, and you can see the ball hangs up in the air a little bit. Chris Spencer is there, and Ronnie Bradford catches up while the ball is in the air. You never know how, how much loft to give the football when the wind's blowing like this. Second and ten for Iowa State. Caldwell, by the way, eight of nine so far. That was his first incompletion. He's got 68 yards of passing. Caldwell keeps it. And Greg Thomas, along with Ronnie Bradford, bring him down. But not before Caldwell picked up very possibly another first down. He got about 10 yards on that play. Kevin Caldwell makes a nice run here. He does one thing wrong. The good ball fake. Watch him freeze Wolfork right there. Now cut upfield. He's cutting all the way back, and he gets into trouble. When you run back to the weak side after you break the line of scrimmage, you've got guys who are going to be chasing you. And instead of picking up 15 to 20 yards, he gets about 10. But a nice play and a good ball fake on the outside. They're going to measure to see exactly how many yards he got. Pickup of 10 yards and a foot, enough for a first down. Iowa State with the ball down at CU's 25-yard line. Jim Walden. Looks like he should be on Saturday Night Live, doesn't he? Standing, sta a conehead. <laughs> <laughs> for a second there, I thought he was frozen and he wasn't going to move. Oh, man. First down for Iowa State at the CU 25. Buffaloes with a 10-7 lead. 
Nice. Jim Knott gets a couple of yards. Frustrated at the fact nobody hit him, he just slipped. They're not all here. Three shorts. I counted them, they're 49. We've got six and a half minutes to go in the first half. CU leads it 10 to 7. Trying to maintain its spot at the top of the Big 8 standings along with Nebraska. The regular season finale. Second and nine for Iowa State. Flags fly. Looked like there was a mix-up on the exchange between center and quarterback. That's a play between the quarterback and the center. As soon as the center, Arm Bruce, feels pressure in the neutral zone, he will snap the football. And you can see right there, well, Joel Steed actually comes across and hits him on the shoulder pads, but the center, it's up to him, even if there is no contact, when you get somebody in the neutral zone, you snap the ball, and thus Iowa State picks up five free yards. A smart play by the quarterback, Kevin Caldwell, and his center, Scott Armbrust, makes it second and four from the CU 19-yard line. This is Sundiata Patterson, gets a yard, maybe two. It'll be third and three for Iowa State. Iowa State from the CU 18. The pitch, first down, possibly more, touchdown Iowa State. Jim Knott goes in for his second score of the day, and Iowa State takes the lead back. Well, another good job of running the option attack, and you'll see Ronnie Wolfork, number 56 in white, really pressure the quarterback from the outside. Watch how quickly 56 gets to Kevin Caldwell. Boom, he makes a good pitch, and not able to cut up inside the block right there. Chris Hudson blocked on the outside by James McMillan. That was the block that got not into the end zone. The two freshmen, Kevin Caldwell, the pitch to Jim Knott, and Iowa State now attempting the extra point. Ty Stewart, another freshman out of Omaha. It's true, and it's an Iowa State 13 to 10 lead. We'll be right back in Ames, Iowa. The McDonald's Big Mac is irresistible. Add fries and a Coke, and so is the deal. The extra value meal at McDonald's today. A great price for a great meal. Mmm, Big Mac sandwich, large fries, medium Coke, $2.99. Plus tax, prices may vary. You're gonna love it. Harding, old money. Nice guy. Bogosian Pharmaceuticals. Shoots in the low 80s. That's Vanderpool. Oil. Good backhand. Who's that? Turpin. Brazilianaire. What's he like? He's smart. Stop by your Colorado Lexus dealer and see how smart driving an LS400 can be. Take a look again. Kevin Caldwell down the line. Here comes Ronnie Wolfork from the walkaway position. Beaker gets blocked. And an excellent block on the outside by two wide receivers. And Jim Knott gets the Cyclones' second touchdown. Lamont Hill and James McMillan, two wide receivers for the 
Cyclones doing a good job of just getting in the way of Eric Hamilton and Chris Hudson. Iowa State, not a very potent offense. Averages 14 points a game, but they've got 14 already <laughs> with 5.22 to go in the first half against CU. The Cyclones with a 14 to 10 lead and kicking off. Looking at that picture right there, you can't tell exactly how cold it is here today. But trust us, folks, it's a wind chill of minus 20 at least. Stewart with not a very good kick. Tony Senna captures the ball at about the 27. So that's where the Buffs will start with it. First and 10. Total yards on the day, Iowa State doing a better job than Colorado. Amazingly, with the wind swirling around Jack Trice Stadium, Caldwell, the quarterback, has completed eight of nine passes. And Darian Hagan, just the opposite. No completions today. This is Lamont Warren, brought down quickly by Larry Radigan. Colorado trying to run the same play that Warren took for the touchdown, and when he brought it back to the weak side, Radigan was unblocked. Lamont Warren tried to bend it all the way back to the sideline. He'll come right to left. The lead with James Hill. Lamont sees the soft side. The seam tries to bring it back, but Radigan's unblocked and just waiting in the hole for the freshman. By the way, this Iowa State defense playing without one of its leaders, Andrew Bugs, the starting cornerback, the leading interceptor on this team, is out with a separated shoulder. Right now, CU with a second and 13 from its own 26. This is James Hill, his first carry on the day. He gets it across the 30-yard line. Gain of about six. Lester Ridley, the tackle. Of course, Bill McCartney said before the game it was going to be very important to do a good job on first down. That plays an indication as to why Hill picks up about seven yards, but you're still third and seven or eight, which is tough for option attack football because you've got so many things that can happen on the defense, and more times than not, third and seven or eight are passing down. Third and six for CU. Contact on the line. Well, Colorado's jumped off a couple of times. Now Iowa State reciprocates. Jay Lewenberg there feels the brunt of Matt Reberg. If you hear a disparity in, in the yardage, we tell you. For instance, Dave just said it was third and about eight, and I told you it was third and six. It's because we just we're don't like guessing. each other. <laughs> <laughs> we don't communicate very well. No, it, the scoreboard is unsure of what's going on down there also, and we're having trouble seeing the yard marker. So please, again, bear with us. Flag on the field. I think Colorado may have jumped this time. 5-4, five, five backward. So a third and one turns into a third and six situation for the Buffs. We've got 3.32 to go in the second quarter. The Buffs down 14 to 10. Darian Hagan has yet to complete a pass, and that time, <laughs> Hagan believes he pulled Iowa State offsides. It might have been Troy Peterson jumping the gun there. I think he did. Yeah, Chip thinks it's funny, but he's in that big buffalo costume. Yeah, why do you think he's smiling? He's warm. Well, so far, it's been a battle of five-yard penalties here in this series. Third and one for CU from its own 38. Lamont Warren. I don't think he picked up the first down, Dave. What an excellent job by the Cyclone defense. Got penetration, the power eye. Dan Watkins was there. Malcolm Goodwin was there as well, and I think you're right. I think Colorado's going to be a little bit short. Take a look at it. Left side power. Radigan jumps through, gets to Warren early, and then he's met by Dan Watkins right in the hole, and I think Lamont Warren's going to be a little bit short. They're going to measure it. <laughs> Here, 
2.52 to go. First half. And the Buffs are about a foot short of the first down. The offensive unit still on the field. Let's see what Coach McCartney calls for here. Under normal conditions, you probably punt the ball without a doubt. But here, because of the footing, hard to get footing defensively. And more times than not, you're a catcher. You catch blocks. You catch backs. McCartney may feel like he can get one yard here. Or he may try to draw him off sides, which they were able to do the last couple of times. The offensive unit still on the field for CU. Darian Hagan at quarterback, three running backs behind him. The more blocking, the better. Fourth and one for CU. They have the ball on their own 38-yard line. This is Lamont Warren, and he is stopped short of the first down. So Iowa State stops CU and will take over the ball in CU territory at the 38-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, what a great play by Goodwin and Radigan. You'll see James Hill, the fullback, got stuffed in the hole. Here comes Radigan over the top, and Goodwin is there as well. Radigan, number 46, meets Lamont Warren behind the line of scrimmage. And thus the gamble fails for Bill McCartney. Iowa State with the stunt 4-3 defense is able really at, from time to time to throw off a young CU line. And that time got into the gap and Radigan was unblocked. So the Cyclones with the ball at the CU 38-yard line. The pitch to not. Inside the 35, gain of about four. Chad Brown the stop. He's run out of bounds by... Boy, Jim Walden's thinking now, hey, if we can knock this thing in the last couple of minutes, we can take advantage of the gamble by that man right there, Bill McCartney. You don't want to have to settle for a field goal. If you can knock it in and go ahead 21 to 10 at intermission, feel like you've got a chance. Right now, it's Iowa State 14 to 10. We are under the two-minute mark in the first half. <laughs> Caldwell wants to throw it. A good rush. Ronnie Wolfork hits him first, and Joel Steed finishes him off. Joel Steed with his third sack of the year. The senior out of Aurora Hinkley High School. There is a flag on the field. Uh, this is probably going to be holding, I would guess, by Iowa State. Holding indicated against the Cyclones. <laughs> Take a look at it. Joel Steed at nose. Double team there, and I think that's where the hold comes. You see Steed grabbed by the left shoulder pad. That's Lance Keller, number 75, trying to get outside and protect the quarterback, but he couldn't. A minute 46 to go in the first half. There's a good look at Joel Steed. The Black Studies major in Boulder. Third and 13 for the Cyclones from the CU 42. Caldwell keeps it, but doesn't get very far. There to meet him is Ted Johnson at about the line of scrimmage. We've talked about Darian Hagan's inability really to negotiate the field. Caldwell's a similar runner in style, and you saw that time tried to tiptoe through a break. Caldwell breaks the tackle here, but has to tip into Ted Johnson, and you're going to lose that battle every time. Caldwell is a very good running quarterback. We told you he's a converted tailback. This year against Missouri, starting at quarterback, he gained 154 yards on the ground. That time, not much. It's fourth down for Iowa State. Less than 50 seconds to go here in the first half, and the Cyclones will punt the ball. John Schnorr will punt it. Rico Smith will field it. The wind behind Schnorr's back. 
Iowa State takes a delay of game penalty. Back five yards. With the wind at their back, they're not too worried about it. The fans came disguised as empty seats today. Iowa State taking that penalty on purpose so they can allow their kicker to go ahead and haul off and give it a boot, although in conditions like this, tough to catch it and kick it. I don't know, you want to give up five yards on any part of the field. Schnorr standing on snow, which probably has already turned to ice. He gets it off, and the wind carries it. And Rico Smith lets it fall. And it goes out of bounds at about the one-yard line. So the Buffs will have the ball with 32 seconds to go in the half at their own one. They'll probably play it very, very conservatively here and just fall down on it. I'll tell you, that's a big kick by Schnorr because even if Colorado tries to play it conservatively, which I'm sure they will, they still have to get the exchange, the snap from center to quarterback, and that's been a tough situation at times today. Schnorr just pooches it up in the air. Rico Smith decides wisely to let it bounce, and it takes a hop, and then directly to the left it goes. Actually hits the Iowa State player right there. That's Matt Rouse. No reason to try anything stupid here with the wind blowing heavily into your face. CU will allow the first half clock to run out. There's a timeout on the field, however. Iowa State doesn't want that clock to run out. Cyclones take their first time out of the half. Second time out, excuse me. They have one left. Well, they can stop it one more time, and they can force Colorado to take two snaps before intermission. And again, you never know. No, in conditions today, we've already seen about five fumbles. One of them coming on the exchange at center. Well, other games around the Big Eight today. Kansas State is at Oklahoma State. Kansas State with a 6-4 and four record, hoping to garner a bowl invitation. Missouri is at Kansas for the 100th time those teams are playing each other. And, of course, the biggie is the day after Thanksgiving. This coming Friday, Oklahoma at Nebraska. Colorado State season is over. It ended last week. The Rams with a 3-8 and eight record. And Air Force finishes up its regular season with a game at Hawaii tonight. Air Force, of course, already has a berth in the Liberty Bowl against Mississippi State. Plus, do me a favor. Don't talk about Hawaii today. <laughs> I mean, I know Air Force is there, but to think about the beaches. We need to think warm Ooh. thoughts here, Dave, and yes. then maybe our tolls will warm up. <laughs> Second and eight for the Buffs. Hagan on the quarterback, Steve. The clock winding down. 21 seconds to go in the half, and Iowa State takes its last time out of the half. That's been a good first half for that crew right there. Iowa State looks like they're going to have the 14 to 10 halftime lead. Well, they call weather the great equalizer. We saw last week. Kansas hung tough against CU. We saw in Boulder. Three weeks ago, Nebraska and CU end in a 19-all tie in temperatures that approach zero degrees in Boulder. But I tell you, it, it wasn't this cold. It was a different kind of cold, whether it be humidity here in Iowa or just the wind. The winds are swirling around us in tornado-like fashion, carrying the snow with it. In Arizona, we call this a dust devil. Here, I guess you can call it a snow devil. And it is a devil of a day. Well, the clock is going to run out. We've got 12 seconds on it right now, but that will be essentially the end of the half. And at the end of the half, Iowa State, a surprising leader, 14 to 10 over the CU Buffaloes. Everybody heading for the warmth of the locker room, or the fans heading for the concession stands or underneath the stands, anywhere where there's a modicum of heat because we have a cold one here. 
We'll be right back with the halftime festivities, if you can call them that. Coast Dodge Caravan has happily served more families than any other minivan. But we've made it even better because we've come up with an all-wheel drive Dodge Caravan. So now you not only get a vehicle loaded with safety features, including the first minivan airbag, you've got one that automatically handles just about anything the weatherman can throw at it. No shifting, no levers, no sweat. Now ask your Dodge dealer about the security of Caravan's ultimate guarantee. I used to buy ski equipment based on what my sister's husband's uncle told me because he was on the Altuvian ski team. And he said to wear sunglasses and goggles together for best visibility. Then I went to Christie Sports. They have Carrera sunglasses with ultra-sight lenses that polarize to block the rays. And Carrera goggles are great for snowy days. And I tried out these Rosignal DB6S skis. They're quick skis because they have new sidewall construction. Wow, well, you should see me fly through the bumps. Boy, that's the last time I listened to my sister's husband's uncle. Christie Sports. We're all over Colorado. Fred Schmidt challenges Best Buy. Best Buy may brag about their prices, but Fred Schmidt's new prices are lower. A GE Electric range is $40 less at Schmidt. A Whirlpool refrigerator is also $40 less. In fact, on November 14th, an independent survey compared prices at Best Buy and Fred Schmidt. The conclusion, Schmidt was lower on 95 of 102 items surveyed. Fred Schmidt. The best just got better. If you head for the high country this winter, you might like to know that Nissan Pathfinder not only has the best resale value of any sport utility vehicle, it also has optional four-wheel drive and optional 31-inch radials to help you get up here. Getting down is up to you. Pathfinder. Buy one for all its value. Drive one for all its worth. Buy a Pathfinder now and get two free days of skiing for two at Steamboat. Remembering Margo, Monday at 10 on News 4. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you at halftime in a cold, windy, snowy Ames, Iowa. The CU Buffs down 14 to 10. And Dave, we knew the weather would impact this ball game, But how much is it impacting this ball game? Well, I think it's obvious if you've watched the first half. Uh, although both teams have been able to score, uh, still you can't, you're limited offensively with what you can do and defensively instead of really coming aggressively across the line of scrimmage you more or less catch people you come up you catch the offensive linemen you catch the backs and I think uh, in conditions like these the offensive side of the ball has the definite advantage Bill McCartney has got to be in that locker room expressing how much concern he has in the second half of this ball game. The Big 8 title on the line, possibly a trip to the Orange Bowl. What do you possibly tell your kids under these conditions? Well, I think what he's most concerned about now is, is not necessarily the offense, but the defense. I think he felt going into the game that his defensive side would be able to handle the Iowa State offense, and they have moved the ball uh, much better than I'm sure anybody expected. Offensively, in conditions like these, it's tough to move the ball, tough to, to to hold your footing and uh, you just got to come out defensively and keep Iowa State from scoring anymore and hope that your offense can put a couple of touchdowns on the board. Why do you think there's such a difference in the way Iowa State is moving the ball and the way CU is moving the ball? And let me point out one example in particular. Kevin Caldwell, the Iowa State quarterback, is throwing the ball so well with the win and against the win, yet CU is struggling greatly. Well, Caldwell has, has made relatively easy throws. He's thrown the ball with the exception of a couple of times uh, five and ten yards down the field where Darian Hagan has tried to get the ball uh, to the medium range route 16 to 20 yards and that's going to be tough in this weather I just think you have to give credit to Iowa State uh, for for really doing a good job offensively and it's up to Colorado to come out here in the second half and establish themselves all right it's Iowa State 14 to 10 we're at halftime and we'll be back with more it's Ford truck month and that means the year's best deals on America's favorite trucks you want a huge option package on your Ford Ranger? You've got it. You want value? You've got it. You want a super cab? No problem. We made Ford Truck Month bigger and better than ever, but you said you wanted more colors. Okay, you got it. Now with bolder and brighter colors, the Ford Ranger gives you more reasons to see your Ford dealer during Truck Month. Dear Mom, I wish we could come home for the holidays. I really miss the family. There may be a way. 
Wendy's and News 4 have teamed up to send four lucky people home for the holidays. Just go to a participating Wendy's restaurant and pick up an entry form. Then write and tell us why we should send you home. Hurry, we need your entry by December 8th. Dear Mom, thanks to Wendy's and News 4, we're coming home. Fair Fair, courtesy of Professional Travel Corporation. Brought to you by Wendy's and News 4. Chances are, you don't need us right now. You have no major difficulties, no family problems, no stress. But if that moment comes when you do need some mental or emotional help, remember this. Bethesda is first in mental and emotional health services, from our hospital to in-home therapy. When you need to know about mental health, you need to know about Bethesda. Call the support line, 758-1123. Bethesda, first. There are plenty of places you can go to take a chance. But for a sure thing, go directly to your Acura dealer. Acura has just been ranked best in operating performance and overall comfort at three years of ownership. That's according to a survey from J.D. Power & Associates. Not a tip from your brother-in-law's bookie. Lease a 91 Acura Legend for $3.99 a month. See Courtesy in Littleton, Flatirons in Boulder, Mile High in Denver. Well, it's been another pretty good year for these CU Buffaloes, to put it mildly. A 7-2 and run one record, and when you're fighting for the Big A title, you know there have been a few plays that have pulled you out of the fire this year. A few plays that have put you over the top against some pretty good teams. Our Mark McIntosh went back through the files of ball games this year, looked through the videotape, came up with some of the greatest plays of the year, and here they are. The kick is Without a doubt, the best run of the year belongs to a linebacker. That's right, a junior linebacker out of Longmont, Colorado. At the 30, at the 35-yard line, reverses and comes to the 30, up to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, and Colorado gets the two points. Greg Beekert's long and winding journey into the Nebraska end zone rivals anything Eric Bieniemy, Bobby Anderson, or Wizard White accomplished at Folsom Field. I couldn't breathe after that, so I don't know how those guys can do it. The best pass? For accuracy, nothing can beat Darian Hagan's bullseye to Rico Smith against Minnesota. How about the best block kick? Greg Thomas's stop of a Nebraska attempted victory on the frozen tundra in Boulder stands out. The kick is blocked! They blocked it! Colorado blocked the kick! I don't, I don't have any tips, because you get some linemen at thirds and... and uh, you get up on, on the line of scrimmage, you'll block it. How about the worst block? No doubt, the Baylor Bears. The best punt return. Darian Higgins up the gut special against Wyoming in the season opener. The best block of the year belongs to a defensive player. Watch number 56, linebacker Ronnie Wolfort. He nails Stanford tackle Steve Hohen, all 6 feet 8 inches and 310 pounds. That block sparked the year's best interception return. Chris Hudson scored from 40 yards out. That tied the score in the second quarter. The best interception in terms of just catching the ball, Ronnie Bradford against Wyoming. How about the best hold? Center Jay Lewenberg against Kansas. The Outland Trophy candidate should get two points for a takedown. The best hit of the year, also against Wyoming. Eric Hamilton says hello to a Cowboy wide receiver. Best hit taken by a buff? Vance Joseph is greeted rather roughly by the Jayhawks. The best sack of the year. Another Wyoming highlight, Beekert and Wolfork do the damage. Best performance by cheerleaders and fans. No question here, the amazing turnout for the big chill against Nebraska. Best protection from the snow during the Kansas game? The furry warmth that only Chip can enjoy. The best job shoveling snow. The CU grounds crew trying to fight the whiteout in the home finale. And the best call of the year goes to Bill McCartney. The Jim fake Harper, field goal turned into a winning touchdown pass against game. Oklahoma State. They fake it. Robbie James complete to Christian Farin for a touchdown. Unbelievable. What a gutsy call from the CU sideline. Oh, send them all to Atlantic City and let them on the crap table. Finally, that game-saving play produced the quarter of the year from holder turned passer Robbie James.
Yeah, this is my fifth year from Strasburg, Colorado. A lot of people probably don't, never heard of Strasburg, but uh, it was my it was a big play in my life, probably the biggest yet. And uh, I was just waiting for this time all five years since I've been here. I'm just so happy to work in the time we needed it. Just some of the plays that have brought CU to the point it's at today. The ISU marching band just came off the field. I guess you have to do something to earn those scholarships. We're at halftime in Ames, Iowa, and we'll be right back. Denver depends on Bell, just as they have for over 60 years. Rude Energy Miser gas or electric water heaters feature our foam insulation. Rude glass bonded porcelain to steel inner tanks. High efficiency burners and heating elements. And Rude Energy Miser water heaters are designed to keep hot water where it belongs. In the tank. Let Bell's experts help you choose the Rude Energy Miser you need now during Bell's Autumn Value Festival. Bell, 4201 East Evans, just east of Colorado Boulevard. It's a rugged 4x4 with a standard V6 and an appetite for dust. It's a luxurious dream with civilized options like a CD player. It's a family classic with room for everyone. So what's a rodeo? You decide. See the rodeo for yourself at your local Metro Denver Suzu dealer. Courtesy of Suzu in Littleton, O'Mary Suzu in North Glen, Jerry Rothy Suzu in Lakewood, and Tidy Suzu in Aurora. Dave Thomas travels the world over looking for new foods for Wendy's. But if it's easy. Excuse me, is this what I ordered? Tonight we feast! But first, we dance! <laughs> and it's not easy. Boy, I sure could go for a big Dave's Deluxe. Eats back a big quarter pound of fresh beef, cheese, three strips of bacon, sauteed onions. The works only at Wendy's. Which way to help help eat? Oh, help 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 Come in for another big Dave's Deluxe today. Are you a real Broncos fan? Do you like to wear crazy Broncos clothing? We want to see. Join Kodak and Channel 4 and enter the Fan Pick of the Week contest. Just send a picture of yourself dressed up in your best Bronco fan outfit. Then watch Broncos beat with our friend Gary Miller to see if you're the best. One winner will be chosen each week to win some great prizes. Play Kodak Fan Pick. Just send in your picture dressed up in your best Broncos clothing to this address. We want to pick you out. Back in Ames, Iowa, a bit of good news to report. The snow has pretty much subsided here. It is still chilling, however, outside approximately 20 degrees below a wind chill factor. You know, most students come to college to learn and earn a degree. CU's Leslie Aholm shows us how two dormitories on the Boulder campus are offering students more than just a place to live while they're in school. What does the Mappian version say? Says something like Class is now in session in Sewell Hall. It's a dorm where students can take courses for credit, but in an intimate environment. It's an alternative to large lecture classes. Uh, in those classes, we emphasize discussion over lecture and writing, because we feel that freshmen need a lot of work with their, their writing. Across campus in the Ferrand Academic Residential Program, more freshmen and sophomore students are taking classes in their dorm. Everything from film studies to biology. And the students take small seminar size classes with some of the best professors on campus. Uh, they also, during their first year in Ferrin, take a humanities course together so that there is a kind of shared intellectual experience that helps create community in the dorm. Sophomore Lisa Sheroff stayed in the dorm a second year because of the academic program. Not only do we take classes, but we study in groups together, and we're friends, so we go out. So I'm getting so much in one small, you know, area. In Farron, there's a true sense of people working together. You not only live with the people that um, are at the university and eat with them, you're also going to class with them. The Farron and Sewell residential programs operate on a first-come basis. Students can't take all of their required courses in the dorms, but it helps them get a good start. There's no magic formula here. If you have uh, really fine professors in seminar-sized classes with approximately 20 students, uh, good things are going to happen. Another important component of the Farron Hall program is community service. I really liked some of the outreach opportunities that I got because volunteering is really important to me and I volunteered all throughout high school so when I 
saw that I could get a small liberal arts education at a large university plus volunteer, I thought that was great. And this past October, I volunteered at the Boulder Arts Center for the San Joaquin Valley uh, Immigrant Children. And that was also an interesting experience because uh, um, you get to see kids from different lifestyles that aren't exposed to what we are. Students are getting a better overall college experience because of the unique Sewell and Farron residential programs. I think it's a very important experience for freshman students to have, and um, I'd like to see more of these programs uh, at the University of Colorado. It makes college a lot more, um, a lot richer, a lot, it's a lot more enriching to, to also live with the people and study with them and go to class, the people that you see every day. We'll return for more halftime activities from Jack Trice Field at Cyclone Stadium in Ames, Iowa, after these words and a message from the University of Colorado. It's the great gift sale at Gart Brothers. Gotta get the guard. Gotta pick a present? The Marcy Apex combines all the stations of a health club in one machine. Only $699.99. Give official heavyweight free sweats from their favorite NFL, NBA, professional baseball, or college team. Only $44.99. It's the great gift sale at Gart Brothers. Gotta get the guard. We've got what you've been waiting for. The all-new 1992 Pontiac Grand Am at $11,899. With anti-lock brakes, AM, FM stereo, quad overhead cam engine, and front-wheel drive. A comparably equipped 92 Pontiac Grand Am is priced less than last year at only $11,899. These exciting features and this great price are all wrapped up into one neat package. See your local Colorado Pontiac dealer. thought a really powerful business computer was way out of your reach. We've got news for you. Introducing the affordable Macintosh Classic 2. Introducing PowerBook from Apple. It will let you run MS-DOS software. It will let you run Macintosh software. It will let you run... Covering Colorado 24 hours a day. Colorado's news channel is Colorado's news leader. The News 4 Late Edition, number 1 at 10. Today's game is brought to you in part by Subway Sandwiches and Salads, by Kinko's, and by your Denver area Honda dealers. a great place to live and study. Hey, let's hit the Mesa Trail. A lot of us like to go run in the mountains real early in the morning. I think that the University of Colorado is committed to the students. I like the fact that the teachers are real easy to get a hold of and they're so willing to help. Well, we've talked about the problems. I wouldn't be here if it couldn't have an impact on my undergraduates. Mm -hmm. We have an excellent group of teachers here. They have so much energy and, and want to pass that on to their students. I think it's really important that the university recognizes the quality of life here. Things like smaller classes, easy access to the professors. You know, I've always felt that the professors are there for me. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it is at the University of Colorado. All right. Halftime winding down in Ames, Iowa. Iowa State with a 14 to 10 lead, and let's see how those points were put on the board, Dave Logan. Well, Iowa State offensively, that truly has been the story in the first half. Kevin Caldwell did an excellent job playing quarterback. The Cyclones' first score off the option play, the nice pitch, and Jim Knorr gathers it in. Excuse me, not crosses the goal line, and Iowa State had a 7-0 lead. Colorado came back after a fumble by Iowa State in a kicking game, and Pat Bluteau nailed one. At that point, it was 7-3 Iowa State. 
First Colorado did have some flashes offensively, and this is pretty much it. Lamont Warren from 74 yards on the delay runs through a couple of arm tackles, and Warren with 73 yards rushing the first half, 74 on this play, five carries for minus one yards other than the 74-yard touchdown run. Iowa State did come back. Jim Knott with his second touchdown of the first half. This off the fine pitch again by Caldwell. And I don't think there's any other way to put it. Iowa State has clearly outplayed Colorado in the first half. And the Buffs are fortunate to be down only four points. They went for it on fourth and one inside Cyclone territory, actually inside their own territory. And Iowa State came up with a big defensive play. They could not convert it, however, into points. Go down to the fourth line in this statistic. On this graphic, total yard, you see Iowa State, 192 total. I tell you, the first line, Les, is, is telling as well, 12 first downs for Iowa State, two for Colorado. No yards passing for the Buffs. Cyclones have 79, and uh, uh, they have completely dominated this game statistically in the first half. And if Colorado is to win a portion of their third consecutive Big A title, they're going to have to come out and be much more effective in the second half. Was a young CU fan trying to spur his team. You might have noticed uh, in one of those highlights, Pat Bluteau, the CU field goal kicker, kicking for the first time this year, the primary person attempting field goals for CU today. Jim Harper is back home in Boulder. But Bluteau normally kicks without a shoe on his right foot, his kicking foot. Today, he is wearing a shoe. And that's because the wind chill is approaching 30 below zero here in Ames. I think important on this particular drive for Colorado to, at the very least, establish field position for themselves. And they're going to be going against that breeze. It's a swirling wind, but going right to left on the TV screen, you're probably going into a wind of about 30 to 40 miles per hour. So you want to make sure you knock out a few first downs to give your punter a chance to kick the ball and put it deep in Iowa State territory again if you don't score. During halftime, the plows were on the field. That's why we are, for the first time today, able to see some of the yard markers. So we'll try and do a better job for you in the second half of telling you exactly where the ball is. We're having problems up here in the booth. The scoreboard operator is going through the same travail as we are. Iowa State kicks the ball off. This is Charles Johnson to start the second half. And he goes down at approximately his own 23. Iowa State with a 14 to 10 lead. Darian Hagan talking things over with offensive coordinator Gary Barnett. Keep in mind the buffs. Right now pushing into a wind that's hitting about 30 miles an hour. The Buffs on offense at their own 24-yard line. James Hill the carry might have gotten a couple yards. Of course, Bill McCartney is a man that will admit to you he loves t-shirts. And this, the newest for the Colorado Buffaloes, four yards a play for four quarters equals three Big A championships, and those are three rings on the outside. Buffs have their work cut out for them, otherwise you can tear up that t-shirt. That looked like the new math. <laughs> Second and eight for CU. Lamont Warren, a nice cutback, picks up the first down. Up to about the 38-yard line. Mark DeGrava, the tackle. Quite a nice move by Lamont Warren. This is a counter tray play actually designed to go to the outside. Right guard and right tackle will pull Roger Ivey and Jim Hansen. Warren is supposed to duck up behind him. Instead, sees the soft spot and takes it straight up the field. Lamont Warren, a good straight-ahead runner that time, chose the right hole, and the Buffs pick up their third first down of the game. On the option, Hagan. Recklessly carrying that ball, fumbles it. And Iowa State recovers it. He was holding that ball out like a loaf of bread in his right hand. I'm not surprised that happened. It's going to be tough to get involved in running the football exclusively against this defense. You can see the penetration and the pursuit. And Hagan has this thing knocked away right before he hits the ground. Dan Milner, the inside linebacker in pursuit, 
Hagan actually had it locked away, but the ball clearly came free. And Iowa State with the first big play of the second half. The 4-3 defense, the stunt defense, Iowa State's got eight men within about three yards of the line of scrimmage, and they're forcing CU to pass, something they haven't been able to do so far. This is the third time today CU has given the ball up in its own territory. A mix-up on the exchange there, and Caldwell thrown for a sack by Chad Brown. Caldwell, the block carrier. I'll tell you what's happened to Caldwell wants that ball back from Sundia to Patterson, and Patterson is clamping over the ball. Caldwell wants to ride the fullback and take the ball back. Patterson said, uh-uh, I'm taking it and I'm keeping it. So by the time Caldwell yanks it out of his arms, Chad Brown has Kevin Caldwell. Fullbacks, you got to put your arms over the ball, but you can't clamp down on the ball. You see T.S. there. That's for Tom Sutherland in tribute to the man who was just released after six years of captivity. Second and 15 for Iowa State. This is not. He gets it inside the 40. Pickup of about two yards. Leonard Renfro. The sophomore out of Detroit brings him down. Unless I really expect the team whose defense plays the best in the second half to win the game. I think the defense that dominates in the second half, and Jim Knott is being helped off the field, but the defense that dominates will win this game, even though Colorado right now are down four points. What a blow for Iowa State right here. Jim Knott, who had more than 100 yards rushing in the first half, 102 yards to be exact. He looks like he's done for the day, Dave. Well, had over 100 yards, as you mentioned, the first half, and he's the guy as a freshman. You see his left foot will get hit from the side when it's planted right there. Knott had his leg in the ground, and Joel Steed rolled into it. That was ugly. On third and 11, Caldwell is brought down once again by Leonard Renfro. Renfro's second sack of the day. So he's got seven for the year so far. Final regular season game, and boy, the Buffs have quite a defensive line coming back. The only one they lose is Joel Steed coming back. The two ends, Marcellus Elder and Leonard Renfro, along with Darius Holland and Brian Daya. And the only starter in the secondary they lose is Greg Thomas. So defense is going to be the strength of this team the next couple of years. Iowa State will be punting. That's John Schnorr. Gets it up into that strong win. Rico Smith is just going to let it bounce. So CU will start with the ball and it's only at its own 20 yard line going against the wind. We've got 12.09 left in the third quarter. Iowa State leads it 14 to 10. Prices are low at Subway, but I'd rather focus on sandwiches. People call them hoagies or heroes or submarines because they're shaped like submarines, but we call them Subway sandwiches. Our six inch meatball sub features meatballs and sauce on bread I just baked all for a low economical price. I won't say how low, but you'll probably find enough in the cushions of your couch. <laughs> for 25 years, Subway has quietly made some of the best sandwiches anywhere. Like the six inch meatball sub, only $1.69, only at Subway. Sales records were made to be broken. And your local Denver area Honda dealer is going for it. Now's the time to buy a new Civic Accord or Prelude because they're priced to move. Go for it and save. Honda, the leader of the pack. Oh, Honda, the leader of the pack. Honda, Shapiro and Dave Logan with you in a very cold, very windy Ames, Iowa. 12.09 to go in the third quarter. The Buffs are down 14 to 10 with the ball at their own 20-yard line. Darian Hagan keeps it, gets about a yard. And this Iowa State defense is really jacked up, led by Dan Milner. 
Well, they're playing well, but the scheme of the defense right now is what's dictating the Colorado cannot. You can count the players in the screen there. You see at least seven. Hagan with the option down the line, and nobody touches the inside linebacker. He looked like he was thinking of pitching it as he went down. Second and nine. And a whistle on the field. Flags fly. The play is dead. Darian Hagan still has not completed a pass today. He was 0-4 in the first half. And this is the first time the Buffs are touching the ball in the second half. The penalty is against CU, which will send them back five yards. So it'll be second and 14. The Buffs with the ball on their own 16-yard line. Unless Colorado can throw the ball at least a little bit, it's going to be difficult to sustain any kind of drive against this defense. Hagan keeps it. Gets it across the 25 to about the 27. Call it a gain of 11 yards. But it'll bring up third and around three. Jeff Cole and Mark Dubrava the tackle. This is really a quarterback draw. Hagan goes back, waits for the seam to appear, and then drops his head and gets up a couple of additional yards. Bill McCartney very, very concerned right now. The Big Eight co-championship at stake. Hagan pitches to Warren. Gets his footing, then gets the first down and more across the 40-yard line. Larry Radigan brought him down. Boy, Lamont Warren has got an extra gear. Hagan with the quick pitch. Watch how quickly this ball is pitched, even before Darian is challenged. And Warren sees the crease and turns it up. A good block by Charles Johnson right there who gets just enough of Mark Dubrava, the free safety, to allow Lamont Warren to skirt through the hole. First and 10 for the Buffs from their own 40. Warren again gets nothing. You know, that last play, Dave, was a prime example of what we were talking about earlier, how when you run the option as your primary form of offense, it's very difficult in these conditions. Warren had to take a couple or three steps running towards the sideline before he could stop, plant the foot, and move upfield. Yep, and again, not to be redundant, but difficult against this scheme of defense. Uh, when you see at the line of scrimmage, count how many yellow helmets, gold helmets, whatever color there are, you'll see a lot of guys within four or five yards of the line of scrimmage. We can't see from that shot. Second and eight for CU. Hagan with a wide open Charles Johnson, the first completion of the afternoon for CU into Iowa State territory at about the 43-yard line. And this is what I'm talking about. This is pitch and catch. In normal conditions, Colorado would be able to throw the ball against this defense. But because of the cold, it's been tough. You see how open Charles Johnson is. Sean Walker, the cornerback, all by himself out there. These guys are all by themselves out there as well. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> Somebody get the straight jackets, please. See you, Lamont Warren. If he can get to the sideline, well, he's brought down at the 20. Mark Dubrava. The final stand for Iowa State. If he doesn't take care of Lamont Warren, Lamont is into the end zone. Of course, after they complete the big pass, a good job. Ivy with a good block. Hanson, an excellent block. And Warren makes one man miss. And Mark Dubrava, the free safety, who is probably the best tackler Iowa State has in their club, comes over and saves the touchdown. Well, Lamont Warren runs the ball in the snow as if he's been doing it all his life, when in fact he's from Englewood, California. This is James Hill who has been running in the snow all his life. He's from Widefield, Colorado, and he's down to the 10-yard line. Dan Watkins brought him down. Boy, if you want to play wide receiver in Division I football in college, you got to be willing to block. James Hill with a nice cutback. Now look to the right side of your screen, number nine in a white jersey, blocking, and he'll get run right over. Charles Johnson is trying to escort James Hill down the field. And Hill picks up another Colorado first down. First and goal from the nine. See you down 14 to 10. Warren, Lamont Warren. A nice cutback. He is almost down to the five yard line. Call it a pickup of four. Mark Dubrava stops him. See you started with the ball back at its own 20 yard line. 
And the burner is the most popular instrument out there. Lots of friends today. <laughs> Chip is even having trouble finding his footing. Second and goal from the seven. Warren this time thrown for a loss. It was Troy Peterson penetrating that line. A freshman meets freshman, and Troy Peterson came through so quickly, he was untouched. Watch number 70 come from the left side of the screen. There's a blown assignment there as Peterson's in the backfield and corrals Lamont Warren. This is Peterson's first start of the year. He earned it after a fine game against Nebraska last week in which he had eight tackles. By the way, Iowa State lost that game to Nebraska, 38-13. to So it's third and goal from the eight for CU. Hagan looking into the end zone. Complete for a touchdown. It's the tight end, Sean Brown. Well, that's a great throw by Darian Hagan. After the play action fake, he had nobody open up. Hagan will fake to Warren. Watch the head go back. He watches Lamont go into the line, and then he's looking, and you can see there is nobody open jumps back inside and buys himself some time and that was kind of a slice to the right and a good catch by Muto Brown. Into the wind for the extra point. So the Buffs retake the lead in a ping pong type game. CU leads it 17 to 14. Did you see the screwball on that Hagen throw? Yeah. From left to right. And we'll come right back to Ames, Iowa. <laughs> join with their presentation. We're ready. When your department has to deliver, call Kinko's, the copy center. We take care of the copies so you can take care of business. Now you can get the highest quality copies in town delivered right to your door. Just call Kinko's, the copy center. We pick up your originals and deliver clear quality copies directly to you. No more traffic, no more lines. Depend on Kinko's. We pick up and deliver. For 1992, there's a snowmobile that has a powerful 190 horsepower engine. Jeep Cherokee Laredo. The snowmobile with four doors. Shift on the fly four-wheel drive. And available ABS brakes. And right now, save up to $26.25 with package discounts and cash back on one of America's most popular snowmobiles. See your local Jeep Eagle dealer. Once again, it's Hyde Park for the holidays. Hyde Park for Cartier. Watches that tell time and a great deal more. The Santos, the world's first wristwatch. The tank watch, a tribute to heroes. Now, your tribute to him. And Cartier's 21 watch. A bold look ahead to the 21st century. Cartier, in Denver exclusively at Hyde Park. This season, for her, for him, for you. Hyde Park for the holidays. We're back in Ames. CU has just retaken the lead 17 to 14 over Iowa State with 7.41 to go in the third quarter. Mitch Berger will be kicking off. And back to receive that kickoff will be Sherman Williams for Iowa State along with James McMillian. This is McMillian at his own 23. And he is hit hard by one buff sent the other way and finally brought down by Greg Thomas. I think that's the first kick or punt that we've had returned all day. Because of that swirling wind, none of the receivers want to gather one in, or at least attempt to gather one in. <laughs> Look at this. These folks haven't gotten enough of it coming to the stadium. They hey, they, they, themselves in snow. They ski in Ames. Well, I guess if you're dressed warmly enough. First and ten for Iowa State at its own 20-yard line. Kevin Caldwell, the freshman, is a quarterback. He's keeping it. And Greg Beaker brings him down. I guess you can give Beaker credit for a sack. I believe it was behind the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what we've seen last, the last series and the first play here, we've seen the Colorado defense start to show signs of dominating the game. 
And you win games most times, and especially when you're on the road, with good, solid defense, something that we didn't see from Colorado in the first half. Well, one thing the Buffs don't have to worry about today is taking the crowd out of the game, because there isn't much of a crowd. A couple hundred, I'd say, and that may be a pine high. A loss of one on that last play, second and 11. Caldwell this time sacked by Leonard Renfro, and I believe that's Renfro's third sack of the afternoon. Well, Renfro gets credit for the sack, but I can tell you, great coverage on the outside by Chris Hudson, who took the initial receiver away. Caldwell quickly wants the slam pattern to his left right there, and Hudson is all over Chris Spencer. A one-receiver pattern, and thus Caldwell had nowhere to go with the football, and Renfro gets there. Iowa State going backwards. It's third and 15. Three wide receivers in the ballgame now. Two at the top of your screen there for Iowa State. Caldwell tucks the ball in. And he's hit by Beekert, well short of the first down. About five yards short, so Iowa State will have to punt. Fortunately for the Cyclones, there is a Cyclone-type wind behind them right now. Second consecutive stop by the Buff defense, and Greg Beekert has been everywhere on the field today. Rico Smith is back to receive the punt. And John Schnorr from Altoona, Iowa will do the punting. Schnorr with a bit of a line drive. Rico Smith will have a chance to return it. Has room up the middle. And is finally dragged down at his own 42-yard line. If they give him forward momentum, that ball will be placed at about the 48. Excuse me, the 45. We're going to take a break in Ames with 5-10 to go in the third quarter. CU leads it by three. Sales records were made to be broken. And your local Denver area Honda dealer is going for it. Now's the time to buy a new Civic Accord or Prelude because they're priced to move. Go for it and save. Honda! The leader of the pack. Oh, Honda. The leader of the pack. Honda. Prices are low at Subway, but I'd rather focus on sandwiches. People call them hoagies or heroes or submarines because they're shaped like submarines. But we call them Subway sandwiches. Our six-inch meatball sub features meatballs and sauce on bread I just baked, all for a low economical price. I won't say how low, but you'll probably find enough in the cushions of your couch. For 25 years, Subway has quietly made some of the best sandwiches anywhere. Like the six-inch meatball sub, only $1.69, only at Subway. So you're looking for the best compact truck your money can buy? And no, you don't want to pay too much money? Then look to the GMC Sonoma pickup truck. Well, when I was looking for a four-wheel drive pickup, I was looking for something that was dependable, was quality, and had good gas mileage and a powerful engine. When I bought the Sonoma, I found that uh, it had all those qualities and it was fun to drive. Well, here's a new concept. Four men in the booth. <laughs> Pass the hot Unless chocolate, fellas. Thank you very much. Dave, and to our right, Dave Armstrong <laughs> and Dave Lappin from Prime Sports oh, Network. Boy. We had one enclosed booth up here. We all chose to share it. Flag on the play. Flags on the field. CU has the ball at its own 45 with a first and 10, but a penalty. First time in my career I've ever felt like I was working with two play-by-play -play guys at the same time. Well, just make sure when he talks you don't answer him. I, I've, I've almost video. done that a couple of times the, uh, in, in the telecast. They're going to wave off the flag, and I presume that Colorado will have a first and 10 once again. Take a look at that snow behind the Iowa State defense, how it's swirling on the field. You might have a better idea of just how cold it is down there. That field is frozen solid. A wind chill factor of better than 20 below. Warren, the ball carrier. This is Lamont Warren, and he is thrown for about a two-yard loss. 
Larry Raddick in the tackle. Iowa State, defensively, the 4-3 stunt, you can see at the snap of the ball, guys are moving in different directions. They give Colorado a lot of different looks up front. And the counter tray that time played very well defensively. Here's a youngster that says, I'm just going to enjoy myself out here. We don't see snow like this in November too many times in Ames. Uh, forget the game. Ah! We're going to have fun in the snow. Second and 11 for CU from its own 44. We've got less than four and a half minutes to go, third quarter. This is Warren on the pitch. Stays on his feet. It's a few more yards and out of bounds at about midfield. But he's about five yards short of the first down. Second time that Darian Hagan has quick pitched the football. What a great job by James Hill. Watch the fullback, number 33, who initially is going to lead Warren outside. Then he feels pressure inside and stops and picks up the linebacker. Warren ducks around the block of Michael Westbrook and picks up about six yards on a play that looked like he might go for one or two. It's third and four for the Buffs. They're at the Iowa State 49. Hagan incomplete the intended receiver, Sean Brown, who was wide open. So the Buffs bring on the punting unit. Lamont Warren limping off the field. I wonder if he's hurt badly. Well, he is one tough football player. Played the last couple of weeks with a dislocated shoulder and just would not come out of the lineup. Today he has surpassed the previous freshman record for rushing in a season for a CU Buffalo passing OC Oliver Mitch Berger in the meantime a low punt into the wind a pretty good punt considering the conditions and that ball is down at about the 15 yard line well, Mitch Berger from Canada he's probably experienced days like this before not many having to kick the football though you know mama didn't say there'd be days like this she said, expect some snow and a little wind, but not like this. <laughs> Ames, Iowa. We are in the middle of the state, and we are in the middle of quite a winter snowstorm. 4.04 to go, third quarter. CU just trying to hang on. 17 to 14 against Iowa State. And the Cyclones with the ball at their own 14. Caldwell with the wind at his back has an open receiver. It's complete to Chris Spencer across the 25 yard line to about the 27. Caldwell again wants to go to the left side. Spencer on just a delay undercut from the right side is all by himself. And had Caldwell put this thing where Spencer could have kept his his feet, he might have gained an additional 10 to 12 yards. Spencer comes from a very athletic family. His sister is a starter on the basketball team at Creighton University, located in Omaha. First down for the Cyclones at their own 27. Caldwell showing a lot of poise for a freshman, finally ran out of bounds by Ted Johnson, another freshman. Caldwell with a couple of yards on that play. Ted Johnson out of Vista, California. Well, I'll tell you, if he had visited CU or a CU game last year under these conditions, he might have ended up playing for UCLA or USC. Second and eight for Iowa State. Caldwell keeps it across the 30, a couple yards. Greg Beekert once again. Boy, we've been calling his name a lot again today. As I told you previously, he had a game last week of 22 tackles. You can tell Colorado making a couple of adjustments. Beekert actually gives Caldwell the look that he's playing the pitch man and yet able to come back inside and help by Greg Beekert. Beekert 6'3 and 220 pounds. He's actually closer to 230 now, so he's not... Uh, He's not light in the middle. Greg Beaker able to take on bigger and stronger offensive guards and continue to make plays. Well, next year, you're sure to see his name on the list of Butkus Award nominees. Best linebacker in the nation. Ronnie Wolfork with his second sack of the afternoon. 
back at the 20-yard line. Call it a 10-yard loss. Same play the Wolfworth got his previous sack on. Colorado has turned the outside linebacker loose, so the play action fake. Normally, Wolfworth would be chucking the tight end and then releasing. Now, the second half, he has been on the go from the snap, and Caldwell never had a chance. Wolfork recruited out of Detroit as a quarterback. Then he moved to linebacker. Then back this spring, he was put at the quarterback position again because CU had a shortage because of injuries. And now he's back at what looks like his natural position, linebacker. Iowa State will have to punt the ball. Rico Smith back to receive it at about his own 30. And he will have a chance to run this back, but he lets the ball drop. Smith playing it conservatively. And the ball is down at approximately the CU 33. We've got 2.01 to go in the third quarter. CU leads it 17 to 14. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of KCNC and the National Broadcasting Company. It's intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or retransmission of this telecast without the express written consent of KCNC is prohibited. You know, we Nicely normally done. read that a lot more, a lot earlier in the, in the telecast. I think our director's lips were frozen, however. <laughs> Forgot to tell me to do that. Lamont Warren, up the middle. A lot of room. And across the 45-yard line. Mark Dubrava, finally the tackle. Good job by the Colorado offensive line that time. Just getting a, a nice push up front. Before today's game, the longest run from scrimmage by Colorado this year was James Hill going for 37 yards. Warren has already gone for 74 and a touchdown in the first half. And you're going to see him get better and better in the next three years. He gives them explosive ability in the backfield, and he's only a freshman. A pickup of 13. It's first and 10 from the Buffs, 46. James Hill hit early and then hit often. The first man with his arms wrapped around him is Mark Gunn. Mark Dunn, who walked down to the Cyclone team as a sophomore, now under scholarship as a senior. A loss of one yard on that play. It's second and 11. We've got 1.05 to go in the third quarter. hit quickly again. Gain of a couple yards. Troy Peterson, the freshman, makes the tackle. So it'll be third and long. Approximately nine yards for the Buffs. Well, you've seen Iowa State on this particular series really gamble defensively. I'm sure Jim Walden feels if Colorado able to knock it down and in for a touchdown and thus would be 10 points ahead. It might be tough for his offense to generate two scoring drives. So defensively, you want to lay it on the line here and first and second down, the Cyclones have done quite well. Well, this is a big play for Iowa State here. If they can stop the Buffs, it forces the Buffs to punt into the wind. And they do just that. Hagen thrown down by Dan Watkins back at his own 40-yard line. It'll bring up fourth down for the Buffs, and the punting unit does come out of the field. Watkins leads this team in sacks. And that time, again, Iowa State gambling a bit. Watkins comes from the left side of the screen. This is going to be a draw again, I think, as Hagen tucks it down. Absolutely. And Watkins, left side of the formation, almost gets Darian Hagen away from that football. And Iowa State has called timeout, forcing Colorado to punt into the wind with 13 seconds left here in the third quarter. Smart call by Iowa State coach Jim Walden. Forcing CU to kick that ball into the wind. CU leads it 17-14. Jack Trice Field at Cyclone Stadium. A day not fit for dogs, but this one is out. The fourth quarter, Tennessee 16, Kentucky 7. Tell you what. I bet he'd rather be inside and the guy on the other end of the leash can go outside, huh? <laughs> Boxers, no, no long hair there. Mitch Berger will be punting to James McMillian. It's a fake. No, <laughs> Berger decides to punt it. A little running start, and it was a very prudent move because that punt will rest down at the Iowa State five-yard line. 
Took me a second to figure out exactly where it was. We're going to take a break and reassess at the end of the third quarter. CU leads it by three. From coast to coast, Dodge Caravan has happily served more families than any other minivan. But we've made it even better because we've come up with an all-wheel drive Dodge Caravan. So now you not only get a vehicle loaded with safety features, including the first minivan airbag, you've got one that automatically handles just about anything the weatherman can throw at it. No shifting, no levers, no sweat. Now ask your Dodge dealer about the security of Caravan's ultimate guarantee. It's the great gift sale at Gart Brothers. Gotta get the Gart! Gotta pick a present? The Marcy Apex combines all the stations of a health club in one machine. Only $6.99.99. Give official heavyweight free sweats from their favorite NFL, NBA, professional baseball, or college team. Only $44.99. It's the great gift sale at Guard Brothers. Gotta get the guard. It's one of the world's largest construction projects, and it's right in our own backyard. Within the next year, it will employ 7,500 people. It's Denver International Airport. Join Luann Aiken each Wednesday at 5 for Airport Watch, only on News 4. Today's game is brought to you in part by Grease Monkey, a proud company for Colorado, and also by Subway Sandwiches and Salads, and by your Denver area Honda dealers. Unlike the National Football League, once the ball is snapped in the NFL, you have to wait until the punt is kicked. But in college football, you can take off immediately. So with Berger feeling the bad snap and there thinking, hey, I might run this, then makes a good decision, realizing he can't pick up over 10 yards, punts it, and everybody in a white shirt is well downfield and thus able to cover the football. Got a could nice do that kick in the there. NFL, right? No, in the NFL, you've got to wait, as I said, until the ball is uh, kicked before you leave the line of scrimmage. Iowa State has 97 yards to go. They're starting with it at their own three. Flags on the field. Flag on the play. And tempers flaring a bit also. If I didn't know better, I'd swear it was starting to clear here in Ames. Do you get that impression, or is it maybe I'm starting to become it, less than loose? It might be easier to see. But it's not any easier to stay warm. It might be clearing, but it's not getting warmer. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> now you're right. The wind isn't swirling as it has been in the past. It's brighter, almost. Colorado nail from off sides. First and five, Iowa State from the eight. Well, the penalty goes against the buffs. A five-yard mark-off for offside, so it's first and five for the Cyclones. Kevin Caldwell, the freshman, still at quarterback. He's been there all day. Their third-string quarterback. Williams, the ball carrier. This is Sherman Williams. Doesn't get much. Williams now doing most of the duty at tailback. Now that Jim Knott is out of the game, Knott gained 102 yards in the first half, but came off injured in the third quarter. Greg Beekert there trying to straighten out Joel Steed's headgear where those little uh, pull things up over your head under the helmet. Sometimes the helmet can move and the thing goes down over your eyes. Second and four. Second and four for the Cyclones from their own nine. No running back behind Caldwell now. He does it himself. And a nice tackle. From behind, Caldwell running. I believe it's Leonard Renfro who did it. Why well, Renfro having quite the game this afternoon? Time out for a measurement. Very close to the first down, and they are going to bring out the sticks. Fisher says yes the nose is well into first down territory we'll give it to him Tell you, judging from how long it took to call that play the offensive coordinator for the Cyclones I, I would think this is probably going to be a pass usually runs don't take that long to explain a lot of animation there on the sideline we'll wait and see 
Either that or his brain is frozen and he couldn't make a decision. <laughs> that would be most possibly so. A day like today. First and ten for the Cyclones on their own 13. And you are right, Dave. He was looking to throw. Nobody was open. And Renfro knocks Caldwell out of bounds. Chad Brown also there. And Colorado's done a better job. You see Chad Brown smiling after he got up. Much better job containing Kevin Caldwell. In college football, when you're sacked, the total comes off your rushing total. So Kevin Caldwell has negative yardage here running the football. Unlike in the NFL, when you're sacked, it comes off your passing yardage. Second and eight. goes to Sundiata Patterson who gets it up to about the 20 a gain of five and word from the Iowa State sideline is Jim not has a sprained ankle and probably will not return to the game Sundiata Patterson the fullback gets caught underneath and almost surfaces downfield here Marcellus Elder and again Leonard Renfro finishes him off Third and two for the Cyclones. We've got less than 13 minutes to go in this fourth quarter. The Buffs with a three-point lead. Iowa State with the ball. Caldwell over the middle. They're calling it complete. The receiver and the defender went to the ground. It was hard to see from any angle. The pass is called complete across the 30-yard line. Well, it's a great catch by Spencer, who may have injured himself. We've got a flag on the play. It's going to come back. Holding against the tight row. The initial throw there. If the tight end is open, Caldwell will take him on the right side. He waits for the hook to open up. The ball fluttering in, and Spencer goes down on the turf. That hurts. Ronnie Bradford right there to make the play, but a nice catch by Spencer, and unfortunately for the Cyclones, it will go for naught. Well, all that debate for nothing. Iowa State is called for holding, so that ball will come back. Throwing against the wind. That's why that ball was fluttering. Well, there's a smart gentleman. Brought the parka to the game. Forget those team issues. I'm bringing my own heavy coat. Third and 13 for Iowa State. And a timeout called by Caldwell. He doesn't like what he sees. With 12.29 to go in the final quarter. CU just trying to hang on to that top spot in the Big Eight. Right now tied with Nebraska. A CU win will assure them of a share of the Big Eight lead. It will also assure them of going to either the Orange Bowl or the Blockbuster. And we'll be right back in Ames. Sales records were made to be broken. And your local Denver area Honda dealer is going for it. Now's the time to buy a new Civic Accord or Prelude because they're priced to move. Go for it and save. Honda, the leader of the pack. Oh, Honda, the leader of the pack. Honda, Honda. Prices are low at Subway, but I'd rather focus on sandwiches. People call them hoagies or heroes or submarines because they're shaped like submarines. But we call them Subway sandwiches. Our six-inch meatball sub features meatballs and sauce on bread I just baked, all for a low economical price. I won't say how low, but you'll probably find enough in the cushions of your couch. <laughs> for 25 years, Subway has quietly made some of the best sandwiches anywhere, like the six-inch meatball sub. Only $1.69, only at Subway. It has a breathtaking shape. It has new overhead cam power and standard anti-lock brakes. Introducing the all-new Pontiac Grand Am. See your neighborhood Colorado Pontiac dealer.
Jack Trice Field in Ames, Iowa. The grounds crew actually roped off the upper deck here at the field. But these fans found their way up. I don't know why they'd want to because the wind hits them that much harder up in the stands. Only about 250 people showed up to this game today. It's third and 13 for Iowa State. Called well in trouble. Does the smart thing, probably. Nobody open in the backfield. I should say downfield. So Caldwell just runs out of bounds. That'll bring up fourth down for the Cyclones. Coverage good that time downfield. And Caldwell really feeling the pressure initially from Wolfork on the outside, which forces him underneath. Ronnie Wolfork will come from the right side and force Caldwell to step up underneath. Marcellus Elder then chasing Caldwell. As Kevin tried to throw the ball or look downfield, you're right, Les, nobody opened up and he had to run out of bounds. Pretty good coverage downfield by Colorado. John Schnoor, very dangerous situation for the Cyclones, punting into a stiff win. That ball might have been tipped. Very short kick. Rico Smith will let it go. But the Buffs will have the ball in Iowa State territory at about the 46-yard line. 12.09 to go, final quarter. Buffs lead it by three with a chance to make it more. Because Colorado now has the wind at their back in the fourth quarter, it makes the touchdown drive in the third quarter that much more impressive and important. It gave Colorado the lead, and obviously now the wind conditions favor CU. Well, be sure to join us tomorrow as NBC and Channel 4 Sports brings you the best in NFL football. At 11 a.m., you voted for the L.A. Raiders against the Cincinnati Bengals. That's the game we'll show you. Then at 2 p.m., it's the Broncos squaring off against the Seahawks for the battle in Seattle. This is Lamont Warren breaking one tackle and diving up to about the 40-yard line. Call it a gain of six. Yeah, that Bronco game. Starts at 2 o'clock against Seattle tomorrow. We talked about Lamont Warren's strength. Watch this. Breaks a tackle there. Keeps his feet moving. Breaks a tackle there. Into the secondary. And he's only going to get stronger as he matures. I did want to mention that coverage tomorrow starts at 10 a.m. With Broncos beat. Followed by the NFL Live at 10.30. This is Warren again. He gets about another 8 yards. And the first down for CU. Why, Dave, you can feel the momentum swing CU's way. Doesn't look like anything is going to stop them right now. Well, Warren is a glider, and it's, it's, it's tough to glide in these conditions. And yet, watch it. Kind of leans to the outside, picks the legs up. Lamont Warren is going to be a terrific player. The footing actually is a little better now because the wind has blown most of the snow off the field. That time, the Buffs go up the middle on first down. James Hill gets a couple. The bad news is they've got to ride those things home. <laughs> well, if they win the wind, you don't even have to pedal. Need some studs in the back of those tires. People do crazy things when the weather gets cold. You know that? I mean, you know, if, if it's 90 degrees, you don't see them doing that. But here, 30 below zero, they've got their bikes. And the craziest thing today is going outside in this stuff. Lamont Warren. Down to the 26, call it a gain of about three, so that should bring up third and five. Dan Milner and Larry Reddick in the tackle. Unofficially now, Warren, 19 carries for 163 yards. And 75 of those yards came on a touchdown run in the second quarter. Third and four. The clock ticking, 10.15 to go in the final quarter. Mark Henry in motion. The give is to Warren, and he has wrecked up Woodland. Bring up fourth down. Larry Radigan again, along with Dan Watkins right there, number 41. Give Iowa State credit on this defensive play, but it's virtually impossible to run the ISO against this defense. You can see both linebackers step up. Watkins on the blitz from the left side. And doing a good job with the line of scrimmage. Pat Luto in for the field goal attempt. This will be a 44-yard attempt. His longest in his career is 47 yards. And he's got the win behind him right here. The kick is no good. The score remains CU 17 and Iowa State 14. 
Well, Bluto hit that ball well. He just, I don't even think he pushed it. I think he just hit it dead right and a miss by a couple of feet outside the right upright. Bluto and Jim Harper, the Buffs normal place kicker, their usual place kicker, I should say, fought it out this week. Bill McCartney put him head to head. Bluto won the job this week. Normally, he's a barefooted kicker. He's not going to take that chance here. The windshield the way it is. So the Buffs lead it 17 14, 9.26 to go in the game. And Iowa State with the ball on its own 27. Caldwell hit by both Beaker and Leonard Renfro. And the defense, once again, we've talked about him in the second half, but it has been a totally different Colorado defense after intermission. Iowa State has not scored, and they really haven't threatened. There's been only one score this second half, and it was put in by the Buffs. Darian Hagan to Sean Embry touchdown pass. And Hagan, with that pass, tied the CU record, all-time record, for touchdown passes thrown in a career. He's tied with Steve Vogel. Second and nine for Iowa State. Caldwell with two fakes. That ball is incomplete. Knocked away by Craig Beaker, the linebacker. The reason you're seeing Kevin Caldwell fake at the line of scrimmage, if the initial receiver is open, he gets the football. He fakes to the right side, then he backs up and lets the play develop. This is a tight fit. Beaker coming from left to right almost gets there and knocks the ball away from McMillan. That throw had to be perfect. It was just a little bit off. Well, you got a good look at that Iowa State offensive line coming to the line of scrimmage. They averaged 302 pounds across. Third and nine. Iowa State with the ball on its own 26. Caldwell escapes one tackle, and then it gets sandwiched by Joel Steed. Brought down by Steed and Renfro. And Leonard Renfro. Iowa State in a punting situation now. Take a look at Leonard Renfro. He has been active here this afternoon. Moves down on a stunt, keeps his feet, comes directly down the line of scrimmage and gets to Caldwell just as the young quarterback tries to turn it up. Leonard Renfro has not been blocked much this afternoon. John Schnorr to punt, Rico Smith to receive. We're under the eight minute mark in the final quarter. Buffs lead at 17-14. Iowa State fakes the punt. But well short of the first down, so CU in very good shape right here. We'll have the ball at approximately the Iowa State 33-yard line, starting fresh. Well, Jim Walden gambles here, but he's got to keep in mind he's playing a guy who's gambled the last couple of weeks. And the fake on fourth and about eight just doesn't work. The snap went to the backup quarterback, Marv Seeler. They but it didn't work. Buffs with the ball, first and 10 from the Iowa State 32. Hagan with the win, and with an Iowa State player pressuring him, intercepted. Lester Ridley intercepted the Darian Hagan pass. And there was just nowhere to throw this football. Hagan shirks off the attempted tackle by Malcolm Goodwin and then just puts it up for grabs. And although Mark Henry was a step behind, going to be a tough throw in these conditions, even with the wind. Seven forty to go, final quarter. Iowa State with the ball. However, they're at their own two-yard line. Darian Hagan has completed three passes on the day, two of them to his own teammates and one to Iowa State. And an Iowa State receiver jumps off sides. That's the tight end, Paul Schulte. Hey, I tell you what, when it's this cold, you can only stay down there so long. If the snap count is what you don't think, you're going to go ahead and go anyway. And this is pretty good technique. Steps to the left leg. That's going to be a hook. They're going to, they were going to run to the left side. I can almost guarantee it. Schulte was the only one that moved. Schulte going back to the hall say, now, was that on one or on two? 
First and 11. You only go half the distance to the goal line on that penalty, and that's only one yard. Iowa State staying conservative. Up the middle. No gain. And Leonard Renfro again in on the tackle. Joel Steed there as well. You know, right now it doesn't look like the interception is going to hurt CU all that much if Iowa State can't move the ball here on this next play. Well, the defense, the bus has dominated in the second half. They've completely shut down the Iowa State offense. And that was something I'm sure Bill McCarty felt would happen the entire game. But in the first half, Iowa State outplayed Colorado. Hadn't been that way after intermission. Second and 11. Iowa State with the ball on its own one-yard line. A good rush put on by Holland. Caldwell takes off. Brought down at the 10-yard line. Call it a gain of nine. However, he is short of the first down. Joel Steed, the tackle. It'll bring up... It'll bring up fourth and about two. Make well, that Caldwell, third and two. Caldwell does a smart thing here. Nobody opens up, and instead of running to the sideline, watch him take it straight up the field and right at the CU defense. Picks up an additional two or three yards and third and short now for Iowa State. Iowa State needs one yard, yet they line up three receivers to the right of the quarterback, Caldwell. No running back behind Caldwell right now. He is able to pick up the first down. Maybe, no, maybe a half a yard short there. Now he's going to be short. And what a great play by Chad Brown. Caldwell, again, a running back, converted to quarterback. So you know his instincts are to pull it down and run with the ball. Nobody behind him. He looks at the tight end. First, he's covered by Beaker. Comes back right side. The strength of the formation now feels pressure. And he's going to run for it. Watch how quickly Chad Brown closes on Kevin Caldwell and gets him just short of the first down. They're going to measure it. Now Jim Walton's got to decide, hey, do we punt here with a little over six minutes to go and down by three? You have to. You have to kick the ball. They do get the first down. Well, I tell you, he was knocked out of bounds well short of the marker and must have got a very kind spot. I think what might have happened is the person holding the marker dropped it as he saw the play coming towards him and it fell forward. So Iowa State picks up a big first down. We've got 6.05 to go in the game. CU with a three-point lead. Caldwell with new life almost intercepted. He threw it directly into the hands of Eric Hamilton. But Hamilton couldn't hang on. Boy, if he did, he had just 11 yards in front of him for the score. Well, Hamilton, the strong safety, you'll see him on the left side of the screen. He's jumping up trying to bat the ball down and has it hit him right under the chin strap. And Eric <laughs> just couldn't quite hang on. I think that ball surprised him how low it was thrown. Caldwell tries to look at it, hits him right in the shoulder pads. He tried to get the ball outside to Lamont Hill, the wide receiver. Hamilton just couldn't quite hang on. Second and ten. This is Williams. Almost to the 30-yard line. A first down for Iowa State. Greg Thomas, the saving tackle. And what few Cyclone fans are here, they like that play. Well, easily the biggest play of the second half. Sherman Williams on the draw. And nobody's there. Good job blocking up front. An excellent block by Doug Scartweed on Greg Beekert. And Greg Thomas, once again, has to make a big tackle. Offensive line for Iowa State, and especially Doug Scartweed, the left tackle, have played very well this afternoon. Another first down for Iowa State with the ball at its own 29-yard line. Caldwell will keep it. Up to about the 38-yard line. A gain of another nine yards, so that'll bring up second and very short. Well, Caldwell tucks that ball under like a tailback, doesn't he? Yeah, because that's what he is, basically. Caldwell again looks downfield and quickly said, I'm out of here. Has good athletic ability, nice quickness, and almost picks up a first down before Greg Beaker gets to him. And again, they're going to bring out the chains to measure. 
This time, however, Iowa State about a yard short of the first down. You can take a look at the Big 8 standings, Colorado and Nebraska, both with 5-0-1 marks. Iowa State at 1-4-1. If Colorado is tied here, it pretty much knocks them out of that conference title hope. And Iowa State is down 17 to 14 with under five and a half to go. I think Jim Walden, if given the opportunity, would probably go for the tie. I don't think he would force a fourth down and long trying to get the touchdown. Second down and one for Iowa State at its own 38. This is Williams again. And he gets the first down and a little more, up to about the 44. Boy, he has some speed. He runs a 4-2-9. 40-yard dash, or at least he did in high school. I'm sure he's not running that well today. But what's he run four yards in? Because that's about as far as he went there. The offensive line doing a good job. You see again, Skartweep blocking on Beaker. Another first down for Iowa State. Less than five minutes to go. CU holding on to that 17-14 to lead. The Big 8 title at stake. Caldwell, that was a dying duck. Marcellus Elder put the pressure on. And he put Kevin Caldwell on the ground, and you see Kevin's a little bit slow getting up. Marcellus Elder, again, working inside, throws off the offensive lineman, Lance Keller, and gets to Caldwell just as the ball is delivered. That wind seems to be picking up now, Dave. Blowing into Iowa State's face. Second and ten for the Cyclones. This is Williams again. Into CU territory. Down to about the 41-yard line. Well, this has been the best running play for Iowa State all afternoon. The draw, and Sherman Williams, again, with this kind of speed, he doesn't need much. The offensive line sets. It's actually a trap draw as Joel Steed gets trapped by the right guard. And Kevin Williams skirts through the hole. Good block Another that first, excuse I, me. I was just going to say, good block that time by the right guard of the Cyclones, Tony Booth. Another first down for Iowa State. This time, Caldwell hit by Chad Brown. Renfro grabbed his ankles, and Brown hit him up top. Well, it's a great play by Leonard Renfro. This was going to be an option, not a pass. Renfro breaks through, takes the fullback and Caldwell, stands him up as Caldwell tries to throw the ball away. Chad Brown finishes him off. Boy, Renfro's having as good a game as I've seen any CU defender have all year. Chad Brown, the junior out of Altadena, California, Finishes off the quarterback Caldwell. Second and 15, the ball at midfield. Caldwell throws a duck again. His receiver, James McMillian, was wide open, but the ball overthrown. Well, Caldwell, I think because of the pressure, I believe that was Joel Steed, could not step up and really get his body into the throw. McMillian almost made a great catch. Third down and 15 now. If you're Iowa State, you want to pick up at least half of it. You'll obviously go for it on fourth down. And Caldwell, I would think, would be most dangerous here, dropping back and then pulling it down and running with it. And Iowa State isn't trying to hide anything. Three of the last four plays, they've lined up without a running back. Right now, they have Sherman Williams lined up behind Caldwell, and Williams gets the call. Gets a couple yards. Greg Beekert stops him. Obviously, Iowa State wanted about seven or eight yards in that play to make it fourth and seven or eight, but now it's going to be fourth and 14. And in conditions like these, tough to pick up this kind of yardage. The CU defense pitching a shutout this second half. Cyclones led it 14 to 10 at the half. The only score coming this half by CU and the Buffs now with a 17-14 lead. We've got 3.05 left and counting. I wouldn't be surprised here to see Colorado bring somebody else and try to generate more of a pass rush than just three guys. Official timeout on the field. Iowa State called it, which means the Cyclones have no timeouts left. 
while the Buffs are still sitting with all three of theirs. While Caldwell talks things over on the sideline with Jim Walden, we'll take a break. Sales records were made to be broken. And your local Denver area Honda dealer is going for it. Now's the time to buy a new Civic Accord or Prelude because they're priced to move. Go for it and save. Honda, the leader of the pack. Oh, Honda, the leader of the pack. Honda, Honda. You're not a kid anymore. You must be kidding me. You look 10 years younger than you're supposed to be. You've got smooth, soft skin, bright, shining eyes. Drinking milk every day, well, that's no surprise. Cause milk tastes delicious. You're not a kid anymore. And I'll tell you what's more. You're not a kid anymore. Milk's good for you. You're not a kid anymore. Milk, cause you're not a kid anymore. Not a kid anymore. Between you and me. This is my best value at 22 grand. The price of today's automobile is higher than ever before. I can get you into a 48-month payment plan. No problem. The right. terms of financing are longer than ever before. Let's go into my office. That's why regular oil and lubrication maintenance every 90 days at Grease Monkey is more important than ever before. 21.5. What do you say? Grease Monkey. Extending the life of your car. We could go 60 months on the payment. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you in Ames, Iowa. If you're just tuning in, you pick the right time. Iowa State down by three points. 2.55 to go. Facing a fourth and 14, and the Cyclones are going for it against a very staunch CU defense. Caldwell going deep. Forget it. Overthrown. Incomplete. The Buffs will take over on downs. A four-man rush by Colorado. Joel Steed puts pressure on Kevin Caldwell and really Caldwell had nowhere to throw the football. Just put this thing up and try to let somebody get to it but the closest player to this football was Julian Hayward of Colorado. Well the key now for CU don't turn the ball over. Try to pick up one first down. Iowa State has no timeouts left. CU trying to accomplish what very few have before in the Big Eight. 22 straight games without a conference loss. First man through is James Hill. Doesn't get much. Troy Peterson makes sure of that. And the clock keeps ticking. Well, I tell you, if things remain as they are, it hasn't been pretty for Colorado this game nor this year, but you have to give a lot of credit to Bill McCartney and his staff, a young team, and like it or not, this club has a share of their third consecutive Big A title. That's been done in the early 80s by Nebraska, been done by Oklahoma recently, the later 80s, and of course, uh, an eight-year run back in the late 40s and early 50s, but nobody else has done it. This is Lamont Warren. Inside the 45-yard line. Amazingly enough, Dave, four CU seniors have never lost a conference game. Darian Hagan, Joel Steed, Greg Thomas, and Jay Lewenberg. Yep. It's been quite a quite a period. And it looks to only get better. I don't know if you, how you can improve on an undefeated record of three years, but I think this team will be better next year than this year. Whether they win as many games remains to be seen. We talked about that last year. How could the team improve and continue to command the big age? And they've, uh, after a two and two start, they found a way to do it. Darian Hagan calls a timeout. With a minute 20 to go in the ball game. See you with the ball and a 17 to 14 lead. Prices are low at Subway, but I'd rather focus on sandwiches. People call them hoagies or heroes or submarines because they're shaped like submarines, but we call them Subway sandwiches. Our six-inch meatball sub features meatballs and sauce on bread I just baked, all for a low economical price. I won't say how low, but you'll probably find enough in the cushions of your couch. 
For 25 years, Subway has quietly made some of the best sandwiches anywhere. Like the six-inch meatball sub. Only $1.69, only at Subway. Sales records were made to be broken. And your local Denver area Honda dealer is going for it. Now's the time to buy a new Civic Accord or Prelude because they're priced to move. Go for it and save. Honda, the leader of the pack. Oh, Honda, the leader of the pack. Honda, Honda. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And I'd like to dedicate this song to a very beautiful young lady. Like the black a bird in the spring Beneath the willow tree Sat and piped I heard him sing Singing orally, orally, orally These things are fogging up. <laughs> My hips just move when I sing. Close. But close just isn't close enough unless you're playing Keno from the Colorado Lottery. <laughs> well, a few Buff fans who made the trip from Denver very happy about the impending outcome to this game. A minute 20 to go, the Buffs with the ball, and a 17 to 14 lead. It's third and two right now. James Hill. If he has the first down, you can pretty much put this game on the board. Dan Milner stood him up quickly. Well, Dave, let's talk bowl scenarios here. The Buffs will do no worse than the Orange Bowl on New Year's Day. Or the Blockbuster Bowl on December 28th in Miami. That's right. And everything boils down to what Nebraska and Oklahoma do next Friday. A week from yesterday, that game in Lincoln, if Nebraska should win, of course, they go to the Orange Bowl and Colorado goes to the Blockbuster Bowl. If Oklahoma should win or tie, Colorado would go to the Orange Bowl and Oklahoma would then go to the Blockbuster Bowl. Nebraska would wind up in the Gator Bowl. Colorado is the only Big A team that does not figure in the Gator Bowl. And with a win here, Colorado sews up its third straight Big 8 championship. The Buffs might end up sharing it with Nebraska if Nebraska wins on Friday. But that's the goal every year for Bill McCartney and his staff and his kids. The Big 8 championship. And they've accomplished that for the third year in a row. By the way, if the Buffs do end up in the Orange Bowl, they'll play against number one ranked Miami. If they end up going to the Blockbuster Bowl, they'll play against seventh ranked Alabama. 55 seconds to go. The Buffs with fourth and one. They will go for it. Smart of Hagen to let that clock run down. Nine seconds, eight seconds, seven. Use all the clock you can before you snap the ball. If you do. They probably will take the penalty here. That's exactly what they do. And they take a timeout. Want to kick it here. You don't want to give Iowa State any chance of field position and, and maybe a chance at a long field goal. I, I would think you want to punt the ball, although snapping the ball in, in weather like this can be tough, too. Buffs have the wind behind them, so they ought to get a little oomph into that kick, hoping to pin Iowa State back near its own goal line. Once again, the Cyclones with 39 seconds left and no timeouts. Orange ball, fifth down. What does that mean? Fifth down or bust? Fifth Must down be a bust. Missouri fan. I don't think so, Les. I think those are Colorado fans. If there's a Missouri fan in here in this weather at Ames, <laughs> bless him. the wrong ramp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like Colorado is not going to punt the ball. Fourth and one for the bus. Hagan keeps it. Dives over the pile. Looks like he has the first down. And if he does, this game is over. You see Darian Hagan. This is going to do it for a marvelous talent. At least in regular season play. Hagan is 27-4-2 starting as the quarterback. Colorado 27-4-2 and Darian Hagan has started. And today it'll be his 28th win. What a great career he's had at CU. Well, I guarantee you. He will go down as the best quarterback in Buffalo's history. They actually you don't have to block. snap the ball if they don't want it. Okay. 
The play clock is not running. Hagen goes down, and that should do it. Both teams headed for midfield. CU locks up a third straight Big A championship and a win against Iowa State, 17 to 14. So make those reservations for Miami. The Buffs are going to either the Orange Bowl or the Blockbuster Bowl. And we'll take a break. We'll be right back to wrap things up in Ames, Iowa. Fall is here and winter's not far behind. That means it's crazy clearance time at Christopher Dodge. That's right, Chris. Get the family ready for winter with a 1991 model Dodge car or truck for the crazy clearance price of only $99 over dealer invoice. Only $99 over dealer invoice. At these crazy clearance prices, they won't last long. And I've got great savings on 1992 models because I'm crazy about my customers. Come see Chris the Crazy Trader at Christopher Dodge, just west of Wadsworth on Colfax. You're not a kid anymore. You must be kidding me. You look 10 years younger than you're supposed to be. You got great muscle tone, bright shining eyes. Drinking milk every day. Well, that's no surprise, because milk tastes delicious. You're not a kid anymore. And I'll tell you what's more. You're not a kid anymore. Milk's good for you. You're not a kid anymore. Milk, because you're not a kid anymore. We have good news. A cure without pain. Half of us will experience the burning, itching, and discomfort of hemorrhoids. Now we have a cure. There's no surgery and no pain. It's been like a miracle. The treatments only took 15 minutes, and I went right back to work. After years of suffering, it's incredible. I can finally do my job without pain. Don't suffer needlessly. Write this number down now. 422-CURE. That's 422-C-U-R-E. If you head for the high country this winter, you might like to know that Nissan Pathfinder not only has the best resale value of any sport utility vehicle, it also has optional four-wheel drive and optional 31-inch radials to help you get up here. Getting down is up to you. Pathfinder. Buy one for all its value. Drive one for all its worth. Buy a Pathfinder now and get two free days of skiing for two at Steamboat. So on a frozen day in Ames, Iowa, the Buffs wrap up their third straight Big A title. They end the regular season 8-2-1 overall, 6-0-1 oh, in conference. They'll either be going to the Orange Bowl on New Year's Day to play the Miami Hurricane, or they'll be going to the Blockbuster Bowl on December 28th to play the University of Alabama. The final score here at Ames is CU 17, Iowa State 14. The executive producer of today's game is Tom Edwards. Today's game was produced by Terry Trevato. Our coordinating director is C.J. Grammer, and our engineer in charge is Dave Porta. For a very cold Dave Logan and Mark McIntosh, I'm Les Shapiro saying so long from Jack Trice Field on the campus of Iowa State University. This has been a presentation of Channel 4 Sports, the home of the CU Buffaloes.